think it's number 15, but it's this is a meeting of the uh, Northampton of the Policies and Services Subcommittee of the Northampton Policing Review Commission. Uh, this meeting is, is on Zoom. It's, it's going to be recorded. And uh, we will begin <clears throat> with, uh, with our roll call. And then we will have 15 minutes available uh, for public comment. Uh, Noah, could you take the roll? Yes. Uh, let's see. Nick? Here. David? Here. Uh, Navi? Here. Cynthia? Here. And Elizabeth is not here. Okay. Thank you. Right. Um, so uh, I'm looking at who's here. We do have some people from the community uh, present. Uh, we also have a commissioner from another subcommittee present, uh, uh, Booker, and uh, we're going to start with uh, 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 open comment um, that uh, is um, uh, a chance for anybody who wants to say anything to our committee. We give you three minutes to talk with us, and uh, we uh, uh, do not uh, respond uh, but we are very interested in uh, anything that anybody would like to contribute um, or say to our subcommittee. Um, and if you want to speak, um, use the, um, let's see, do I even have it on my own? Use the um, reaction and uh, um, section on Zoom and you can raise your hand uh, when you're there and I will know you want to speak. And uh, I do not see that anybody is asking to. I'll give it a little bit of time if anybody's trying to decide. Sorry, Nick, but um, Noah's reminding us about um, the minutes. Thank you. Thank you. We'll do that. Uh, we'll do it a little bit out of order as a result. Okay, um, I'm, I'm assuming that uh, our public participants do not want to say anything at this time. So we're going to, wait, we have one. So um, Rai, uh, go ahead and, uh, un, I, uh, no. do, Rai, can Rai unmute himself? He, he's not asking to speak. He's not asking. For oh, he's just agreeing. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, okay, got it, got it, okay. I have to learn to read the emojis. Um, so uh, uh, let's go um, to the minutes. Uh, the minutes were sent out this afternoon um, from the last meeting. Uh, and um, Noah, is it just the last meeting that we're addressing at this point? Mm. I think it is. I think we approved the minutes previously. I sent, so the ones I sent today were the full commission, um, oh. the policies ones I sent last oh. week, but it's from February 22nd. And okay, so we don't have any minutes to available to approve at this point. No, there's uh, there's two, ra two different sets of minutes. I just sent them earlier than today. Oh, all right. Uh huh. So that they're, and they're from the February 22nd and March and March 3rd, I guess, yeah, so the last. Oh, so there are, that's what I was asking. So there's both the, Feb the 27th and the and March 1st. Um, I am going to ask if there's a motion to, uh, let's take both of them unless anybody has an issue. Is there a motion to approve both minutes? I can move to approve for a second. Okay, yes, yeah, second. Okay. So we have a, a motion to approve by Cynthia and a second by Namdi. Um, the minutes are approved from the last two meetings. Thank you. Um, this allows us to move to our next item on our agenda, um, which is that Cynthia was able to um, reach a dispatch, which we now understand to be um, a, a completely separate department uh, in the city of Northampton. And uh, uh, it really has been 
I think, um, enlightening for most of us to learn about that, um, the, the organization of it. So I'm going to ask you, Cynthia, to in introduce um, our speaker. And, uh, and then we have approximately 15 minutes set aside for the speaker. But let's see, let's see how we're all doing with it. I will keep track of the time and uh, check in with all of you. Sure. Um, so thank you, Nick. Um, Kelly is here. Um, and I think I have the, I think it's Director of Emergency Dispatch. Do I have that right, Kelly? Yeah, so it's Director of Communications. Director of Communications, yes. And um, I just very quickly outlined for Kelly, um, you know, we just want to know what what is done in what we're calling dispatch and how calls come in and um, how many individuals are there and how, what is their training and how do they triage calls. And um, I, we know 9-11 is under this particular department and also the business offices for both the fire department, uh, ambulance and police. So um, I think if we just start off with what your department does, Kelly, and then give us some time to ask some clarifying questions. Um, and I know we're constraining you, but we're very, very delighted to have you here so that we can learn some more. So take it away, Kelly. Sure. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I think that it's important um, to understand our role in the whole system. So we receive and process all of the emergency and non-emergency calls for the city of Northampton for police, fire, EMS, and animal control. Um, when we receive those calls, we're going to ask questions. We use our protocols. So we are licensed in a fire and EMS protocol. We were licensed in the police protocols, but we found that they weren't asking enough questions for us to try to really decide um, if it needed a police response. Um, so we kind of spun off of those original protocols. Um, and the questions that we asked, we need to determine scene safety, safety for the caller, and exactly what is occurring on scene. <coughs> Um, while we're doing that, we monitor and partake in radio traffic for all three agencies, um, and that could be simultaneously while we're talking with the caller and documenting the events. Um, we maintain radio connection with the schools in the event of an emergency. We're responsible for documenting all the calls for service. So the vendor that we use is CAD um, for our computer-aided dispatching is IMC. Um, we enter a call into the computer system. And when we do that, we put in the address and it will tell us what police jurisdiction that is. So if it's in Florence, it's generally area three. And we know based on the police schedule, who's covering that area. Um, and then we will enter the reporting party. So the person that's calling it in um, and then any involved parties, if they give us that information, we'll also write a brief narrative as to what's going on. And that could include the description of the event, the, the description of the people involved, if, it, if there's a suspect involved. Um, and the officers also can see those in the cruisers so they can read some of the information or they can see who they're gonna be dealing with. We, we're the after hours answering service for the DPW. So if somebody has uh, like a water issue in their home, they'll give us a call and we can page out the DPW. Um, we monitor burglar alarms for the city and fire and business, business, fire alarms for the businesses and city buildings. We maintain a database in our computer of key holders um, and owner information for businesses and for some residences um, in the event that we may need to uh, call somebody in if there's a fire or an emergency at their business. Um, for hiring and training, so our staff, we work three shifts. Um, we do an eight to four for day shift, four to midnight for evening and midnight to eight for the overnights. We offset the police department by an hour. So that way in shift change, we at least have somebody who's been there for an hour before the officer starts. So we can kind of fill them in if there's any calls pending. Um, we are similar to the police department where we do have a shift change. It's approximately 15 minutes and we pass on any incidents of note um, or if we've had any arrests or if we deal with somebody um, over and over again. Um, we typically have, we have no less than two dispatchers on at a time when we're full staffing, which has not happened in a really long time. We have three dispatchers on. Um, on the overnights, we only have two because the, we don't, the call volume doesn't need additional. For our hiring, it takes about a month and a half to hire a candidate. Um, the training is four months long and we have classroom training, 
on the job training and in-house training. So the classroom training, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts requires only three certifications for to become a telecommunicator. That's a basic 40 hour telecommunicator course, a two day equipment class on how to use the 911 equipment and a three day emergency medical dispatching class, which gets them um, certified in the protocols that we're, we're licensed to use. Um, for our in-house training, they spend a week on specific to police calls, um, who our police department is, what their policies are, because as a dispatcher, you need to be very familiar with police policy um, and for their responsive calls. Uh, then we do a week with fire and EMS. When, um, when COVID wasn't happening, we would go on ride-alongs with the police officers. So we do two ride-alongs as part of the training, uh, one ride-along in the fire engine and one, one ride-along in the ambulance to understand what's happening out on the street. Um, we also do a, the model of you do I watch. So as I'm the trainer, I will perform my job as my trainees watching me and I explain is what's going on. And then we do it together where they may answer the phone and, and I'll help them along of, you know, okay, don't forget to ask if there's a zone for that burglar alarm. And then this is how we're going to dispatch it. And then they do the work and I watch and I just help with, with any corrections or if they need any suggestions. They have to learn how to use our business phones, our 911 system and the radios, what proper radio terminology is because we do, um, we have very high customer service as far as the call taking. And then as far as our radios, we're very professional and we use only certain words over the radio. Um, we have to be cognizant of what kind of information we're relaying based on HIPAA, as well as what sounds professional. Um, and like I said earlier, we are, need to know the police and fire policy. So our training is about four months. Our attrition rate, um, I can't give you specifically, but I know it's about 50%. We do lose about half the people that go through training because it's a lot of information to learn. It's a high pressure job. We listen to a lot of emotional responses from callers. Um, and not everyone can do it. I mean, when you put it all together, they have to be able to talk on the phone, answer the radio at the same time and, and listen to what their partner is saying. So we have to be able to listen to three or four different things at the same time while maintaining our composure. Um, the calls for service that we, are, we, that we receive, I know that's kind of the meat of what you guys are looking for. Um, I don't have the numbers and Cynthia, I hope to have some numbers for you tomorrow. I don't think I'm gonna have all five years. Um, but there are some calls that require a police response, and those are going to be calls that, um, that are reporting a threat to life or property. So those could be burglar alarms, robberies, um, erratic operators, so somebody driving um, at a high speed swerving, um, traffic accidents, um, active disturbances and assaults. Those are outlined in the police policies, which I would believe that you guys would have access to. Um, but we also have seen a huge um, increase in 911 hangups. Um, and that's something that we do require a response for. And I, and I attribute that because we do get people, more people have cell phones. And if anyone has a new iPhone, if you hit the button five times, it calls 911 and people don't realize that. So that actually has an officer respond to the area. We try to call them back because it could be somebody in distress that's calling 911. If they can't communicate, no, I'm all set. And people are actually starting to try to outsmart the 911 system. We've had 911 hangups where you call back and they're like, oh, I'm sorry, I was just trying to call and order a pizza. Or I was just calling my friend and I hit nine by accident. I have to call nine when I, well, I have to use nine when I'm calling out from work. So we do follow up on those calls. Officers do respond just to ensure because we've had incidents where the person was pretty convincing that there was nothing going on and it was actually um, someone was being held against their will. So just for our own protection, um, liability wise, we send an officer. Um, there is a lot of, um, I'm sorry, everything is recorded in dispatch, everything, police radios, fire radios, our uh, business lines in 911. Um, so it is a very um, transparent job. You know, anytime something goes wrong, you'll see on the news, it's a 911 caller and they'll play the call. Um, so we do, like I said, we are very specific about protocols and we're very specific about good customer service. We don't hang up on people. Um, but then that also sometimes turns into people are demanding to have an officer, so we send them. Um, the other kinds of calls that we get that tend to be like a little bit 
more discretionary are well-being checks. Those could be like people lying on the ground or I haven't heard from my friend or a relative. Can you check on them? Person not showing up for an appointment or agencies calling because people feel the person's not answering the door for their meal delivery and they're concerned for them. There is um, one person that we go to daily just to check on them because he doesn't answer the door and that's their protocol. Um, it, we do get calls for distraught persons. So there's somebody that's walking around on their phone and they're yelling or my neighbors were arguing and now she sounds like she's crying. Can you have an officer check on her? So those are kinds of calls that we do have to check on. Um, and I don't know if that's something that you would be looking at addressing. I know that you're kind of trying to look at some kind of diversion calls. Um, hmm. I'm sorry, did you have a question? No, sorry, no, go ahead. Okay. Um, traffic complaints, you know, people speeding on my road, those are calls that we get often, noise complaints. Um, right now with COVID, we're getting a lot of calls about um, people not wearing masks um, or social distancing, um, people congregating by their storefronts. So in the summer, we get a lot of these calls where people are kind of hanging around by the storefronts downtown. Either they're making patrons uncomfortable, coming in and out, or they're smoking by the doorway. So the smoke's going into the business. Those are um, kind of good intent calls. We do get a, a handful of suspicious persons calls. That could be that, you know, I'm looking out my window and there's someone looking in the cars or they're trying the door handles. Um, suspicious people in the neighborhood walking around houses or door to door. And those could be solicitors or it could be the water department checking meters. Um, but we do have to check on it. There's been times where we've said, you know, it's, it's all set. It's somebody just soliciting. Well, how do you know that? Because what if I get killed? Okay, we'll send an officer. So, you know, it's those kinds of calls because we're recorded. We don't feel comfortable just, re just saying, you oh, know, no, it's fine. Because if something does happen, then it was reported to us. We didn't do anything about it. Um, let's see, animal calls are another big call that we get. Um, that could be a dog inside a vehicle and the window's only partially down, um, dogs barking. That um, sick animals is another one that we send officers to. If somebody thinks that, you know, there's a raccoon out during the day. We explain that it's not unusual. It's not normal, but it's not unusual to have an animal out during the day. Um, so we do have officers check on that. Uh, found property calls. We've been getting a lot of um, fraud and scam calls, but we also have officer initiated calls. Uh, traffic stops, disabled motor vehicles, property checks. Um, so if somebody goes on vacation and they say, hey, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna be home for a week. Can you have an officer just swing by my house? They'll do property checks um, as kind of a public service. It is difficult for us. I know that you've asked kind of uh, numbers of what is considered emergency and non-emergency. And Cynthia, like I explained in my email, the fire department feels that every call that they go on is considered an emergency until they get there and determine otherwise. And for the police department, it's really difficult for us to delineate in our computer system what's emergency and non-emergency, especially after the fact. The dispatcher knows it when they give it out, but you know, like a past event, um, a past call, like it happened a couple hours ago and now I want to report it. That's obviously not an emergency, but we there's no way for us to note that in the computer that it's easy to pull those facts out. So um, unfortunately, that's a challenging request I wouldn't be able to meet for you. Mm -hmm. Kelly? Yeah, Kelly, I, I, we're at around 12 minutes. Okay. Uh, this is very useful information. I'm not stopping you, but I want to make sure we have a little time for questions. Sure. And no so, problem. I mean, yeah, that was pretty much what I had that I wanted to relay. And I figured we could have a discussion coming from that or after we meet, if you guys have a chance to talk and Cynthia comes by tomorrow, we can I can hopefully add some more information for you. And so let me open it up. Go ahead, Namdi. I was just going to ask when when you have to uh, go, Kelly. Like, what, like in other words, I know we said we take fifteen minutes, but I just want to make sure we know when you have to run. Do you have some particular time when you have to leave us today? No, nope, I just have to make dinner at some point for my family. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. that's important. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll just ask, get us started with one question, and it's sort of at random because I, I was struck with the, the concern that you have about liability. Um, and how that drives a lot of decisions, it sounds like. Like you don't wanna be in the position of being asked secondly why you didn't respond, why you didn't send somebody out. So right. could you speak more to what you've been told about liability, what you, what you know about liability essentially. Like what, what, like what have you been told about what happens to you or to dispatch or to your employees um, if there is some kind of significant problem? I guess that's, that's basically um, my question. Well, I, I think the concern is that there is disciplinary measures that my employees have to be concerned about, as well as lit, um, 
like uh, being sued. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is, is so we're processing the calls. And if we decide not to, if we make the decision not to send somebody and then the police department has additional information that we weren't aware of. Um, I'll give you a perfect example. We had a report of a, we'd been getting a lot of breaking and enterings where people were on vacation um, and we didn't make that connection in dispatch. And we had a report of a suspicious vehicle in a neighborhood. And the only thing that made them suspicious is that they were hanging out, they were sitting out on the street um, and caller did state that they were Hispanic and he felt like that was just suspicious for his neighborhood. So the dispatcher said, well, you know, just because they're Hispanic doesn't make them not allowed to be in your neighborhood. Um, well, they had, the police department had been dealing with uh, vacation checks out in that neighborhood and the people were there at two o'clock in the morning and they could have been involved and we didn't send somebody so that resulted in disciplinary action for my dispatcher so they feel more comfortable well if you if we're getting a call we're going to send somebody we don't want that liability does that make sense to answer your question it does it does and i, and I, I promise one, one last uh, connection yeah. to that and i'll let other commissioners jump in uh do you have some kind of complaint process like are you do you have records of people saying you did something wrong and you have like or some sort of record of the complaints you've gotten? Is there something like that that exists? Um, other than what's in our employee file, I have an in-house file that I um, have calls that we checked into, but typically what happens is the complaint will go through the chief of police and she'll advise me of the complaint and I can look at it from there. Um, or they could go through the lieutenants um, for the shift if it's like if it's three o'clock in the morning, it might be the over overnight uh, lieutenant that they'll go through. Okay, thank you. I, I'll, I'll stop. Thank you. Oh no, I don't mind. <laughs> well, I want to concede to my other my other commissioners. I'm sure they've got plenty of questions. And our time is limited, so I thank you. Um, I have a question, and uh, uh, um, Booker, if you want if you want to ask a question, please feel free to do so. Um, uh, my my question, Kelly, is: Do you ever um, uh, do you have places that you send calls to other than the departments that are that you listed? In other words, do you send calls to community agencies? And how would you? Can you give me any examples of how and when you would do that? Sure. We have calls um, with people who are having a mental health crisis and uh, especially if it's a repeat call. So we've already gone over and check on them and, you know, clearly they're not in any immediate danger. They don't, they're not exhibiting, exhibiting any self-harm. They don't want to go to the hospital. If they call back, we will refer them to um, CSO, clinical score options. Um, oftentimes people get angry with us for transferring calls over there. They'll call back. They'll say, why did you transfer me? I didn't want to talk to them. I want to tell you what's going on. Um, there's been times where we will refer people to Highland Valley Elder Services. You know, they have a par an older parent who is, who needs assistance. They need assistance. They just can't care for them. So we refer them over there. Um, we've referred people to other police departments because the incident didn't happen in Northampton. And unfortunately, there's nothing that we can do to help them. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much those are the resources that we have available to us. But there's been times where we know that we've got somebody that needs help and we will do the best that we can to try to find help for them. But sometimes, I wish I could think of an example, but sometimes there just isn't an agency that they, that little, that peg fits into. It's just not gonna fit. Um, so we will continue to have an officer interact with them. Um, you know, one of the things we have is um, if we have a continual mental health issue, um, we have officers go over and check on the person. They're just not in need of services. They don't want to talk to commute to CSO. So we talk to them. Um, well, we keep track of them. And I, I kind of explained this to Cynthia the other day on the phone is that, you know, we have a couple people in town who do call probably could be anywhere from 10 to 20 times a day. And we, they don't need services. They just want to talk or they're having some kind of mental health issue. They'll call us. If they'll get very upset if we transfer them to CSO. So we just listen to them and document it. And it kind of creates a baseline. So if it's something where they are out of, clearly their baseline is out of the ordinary, um, we will call CSO and we'll have them check on them. You know, have you heard from so-and-so today? Seems to be really upset. He's been swearing and, and using very assaultive language. And if they haven't checked on him, we'll have an officer go over and check on him. So, you know, we do try to work with the mental health clinicians over there to try to get them resources. 
Can I ask what they say is the reason they don't want to speak to CSO? They don't want to be transferred. I don't, you know, there really isn't much. Um, I think that they just want to talk to a police officer. It's often what the, what the oh, issue oh, So they're, they're asking specifically, I want to talk to the police. Yeah, they'll want to just talk to us. They don't want to talk to a clinician. You know, sometimes what their problem is, is they're having what a perceived issue with a neighbor when that might not actually be what's, their reality isn't matching what's going on um, okay. in reality. And the officer finds that and we try to refer them to CSO and they don't like that. Okay, Booker, go ahead. So thank you, thanks for letting me join. Um, and actually, uh, Nick, you had asked the question I was really curious about. Are there any other agencies you call or might direct a call to other than CSO or Safety Net? Um, we really haven't referred many to Hampshire Hope. Occasionally we will if it's somebody who has a relative who has an addiction. Um, we will refer people to the courthouse to get Section 35s on people who may need assistance who have a drug addiction or alcohol problem. Um, you know, it's something that we don't really need to have officer intervention with, but it's a resource that we can refer people to and we talk to them about how that process works. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, we don't have, I mean, we can refer people over to uh, shelters, um, but we don't have a, a list of resources that we can refer people to. So if you have a list, we'd welcome it. <laughs> um, you just beat me to the next question because we're, I think part of the recommendations we may be working towards is um, we do want to expand that possible list. Um, God knows how you would triage which of the things on the list to call. Um, but it sounds like that's something, uh, and by the way, the police chief Casper has also said that she feels that many of the calls the police are going to, the police don't need to be present for. So it sounds like there's a, there may be a role for having other places to call other than CSO or ServiceNet. Yeah, and, and that's the thing is we would need to have some kind of very clear um, process in which calls we refer people to. Um, and, you know, it could be some, starting off with like a dual response. So the police go with this agency and we see what works and what doesn't work and what kind of calls. And that's how we could build the, the kinds of calls and, and the questions. We could gear the questions that way. I am going to just note that we're at about 20 minutes. Um, we could really go on much longer with you, Kelly. I, 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 I mean, I, I know that. It's just that we have our plate really full tonight. Cynthia is going to be going to there to, tomorrow. And if I, I'm going to just say, if we have more questions, we could give them to Cynthia and she could ask you uh, tomorrow when she, when she visits. Does that sound good? Does that sound good to, uh, to, to the commissioners? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Kelly, really thank you a lot. I appreciate this. Yeah. Oh, sure. thank, thank you so you. much for having me. Great. You, thank you so much. V very, very helpful. Very interesting yeah. information. Um, really fills, fills things in. Thanks a lot. Sure. And thank I'm just going to stay on the call in case you guys have, if something comes up later on, but I'll just be listening in. Sure. Oh, fine. sure. Fine. Make your dinner though. Make the dinner. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, I'll go prep it. <laughs> okay. Um, so let me. We have. We have the beginning of a report. Uh, we have a, a copy with that we that I'm I can easily put on share uh, that has. Uh, David's uh, kind of spine of the report, uh, some comments uh, by myself, and some additional comments by Namdi, and I'm sure Cynthia has some things to add. I want to just ask all of you for what you think our process should be at this point. What would, how mm -hmm. would you like to, to walk this through? Before we, can I ask, I, I read your Nick and Namdi's comments this afternoon and 
had a couple comments on your comments, but since I am completely inept at Google Docs, I don't know if you saw them. Uh, yeah, you... I couldn't see anything added to the comments I made. I saw an email from you today, David, but didn't couldn't see changes um, or suggested yeah. changes. I, I need the uh, kindergarten version of Google Docs instruction. Uh, um, so. it, but but if, if you can see your changes, one thing you could share your screen. I can't even, I can't see them either. Oh. <laughs> I, I can't find my changes. I I'm, made, with you. I'm with you, David, yeah. I yes. made changes. I thought I'd save them. It, it's pathetic. I mean, oh. I, I'm to answer your question, Nick. I mean, I, I I remember most of what I my comments were. I think it probably just makes sense to go to go um, through to it. Walk, walk through it. Yeah, to just walk through the whole thing. I mean, I think generally, you guys, uh, you know, beefed up a lot of what I did in terms of the. Um, so. I have a version of, I have a version with my comments and Namdi's comments, but I have little notations of my own on the side that are for, that are cueing me on what I want to bring up tonight. Am I, do I have, am I allowed to put that up here? Is that, yeah, can I, I, I think anything that you do in this meeting that you make public for people to see is, is, is recorded. Okay. It's, I think that's all, I don't think there's any barrier to that, you know. Yeah. All right. So mm -hmm. if I put the share screen, you'll be able to read w what all of us wrote and just know that my little check marks on the side are just to remind me of things I want to say I, I, I concur with or I don't concur with. Yeah. So sure. here we here we go. Actually, and before we get started, but you asked about general process. I, um, I don't want to slow down what you're doing here, Nick, but no, I know I, I, I spent I think all of us spend some time on this, you know, I mean, uh, and and as I said in the last full commission meeting, you know, I, I, I increasingly find that the words kind of matter. And I don't find myself in a lot of opposition to all, like I'm not preparing to say that I'm, I have a problem with any words that any of you wrote. I mean, but what I'm saying is that I would really worry if um, all this effort that we're doing now um, in some sense didn't, wasn't represented in the final report. Like I think we took the trouble to kind of lay out things in some order and detail. And I guess I'm, I feel like I want to, engage in this process today with the idea that we are gonna actually be lobbying for something very much like this, the thing we agree on to be included in some form in the final report. Like, I, I guess I wanna say that's my feeling right now that I, um, yeah, with, with wording and sort of thinking that we're gonna to do together, I would hate for this just to be like some sort of cutting room floor document when we're done with it. So that, 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 that's, that's what I, so I think we're engaging in the process today to yeah. perfect or improve this document for inclusion in the final report in some way. I think it. I think you're. I think it's worthwhile what you're bringing up before we charge ahead. Cynthia, I'm sure you have something to say about this. Yeah, I, I appreciate your comment, Namdi, and your suggestion. I, I just want to, um, if you can visualize, um, Dan and I are going to have four of these coming to us, and we already have them, right? Some, all of but one, and there's repetition. And so at the end of the day, I think what we want to avoid this time around is that cut and paste that happened in the preliminary without having a flow and integrating some of these things, thinking, the thinking and thoughts. Um, are we going to use the exact words? I can't guarantee that because the four reports are coming from so many different directions and also complementing one another, repeating one another. So I don't want to violate um, what you what you want to establish tonight, Namdi. I just want to put that out there that um, you may not see that exact sentence the way it was worded. And I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. Dan and I are still talking about how do we how do we put that out to the commission and are we going to be you know, when we when we have a full commission there doing the same thing that we're doing tonight, what's that going to look like? We don't we don't know. So, yeah. So I guess the two things I'll say about that is one: it, any wish that I have for how things should work out, I'm only one of 15 voices. I fully expect that my wishes will not will not be fully realized. You know, I think none of us should expect that. Um, but I think it's still worth saying it because I I think it, it does have some profound. I, I'm assert, I'm I'm saying that I I, I value. 
so I don't think it needs to be exactly the words, but I think that the, the sentiments and the ideas and the spirit that we kind of agree with, the, especially the rationale. So we find it, I tried when I edited to sort of state, you know, we're saying this and we're saying it for this reason. And, and I kind of like to preserve that, I, especially for people receiving this document, I'd rather not be like a laundry list of ideas without sort of the thinking behind the ideas. Yep, you know, we yep. took a lot of time to think about stuff. Anyway, we can get into this, but I, I, I just like us to kind of have in mind, or maybe even articulate tonight, with you present, Cynthia, because we have the benefit of having you know, a chair for the whole commission, a co-chair with us. Um, if there are things that are particularly important to, to have preserved, maybe we should say that as part of our process tonight. Like it'd be really great if this particular part like was you know, in, in the document. And maybe other things we feel less, you know, could go this way, that way. You know, and I, and I, I, that's what I suggest as we go through Nick's document. People could flag areas of particular passionate concern maybe as we go through. I want to just say one thing. I feel like Namdi and David have really said that our subcommittee has a certain area that belongs primarily to us. And we even talked about, we don't want to say some things that might intrude on the area of another subcommittee. So I, I just want to say, as we walk through the document, uh, I, I mean, we started right off, I crossed some things out because I said, these are generic things. They're, they're about what the commission was asked to do. But things that have to do with our subcommittee, I think we should highlight as these are the recommendations pertaining to the work that we did. Uh, so I just want to say, let's keep that in mind as we walk through this. And I, um, could I just, um, just one more example. Um, I, I think, um, I, I'm just gonna call this one sentence out, Nandi, as an example. Evidence exists, the NPD is progressive. And I think I know the meaning behind that statement that we want, we want to acknowledge and recognize what we have heard and how we feel. I'm not sure evidence exists. And so, and so that's all I'm saying. We want to make sure that we don't have that um, that vulnerability in our report. That someone will say, "There's no evidence of that," <laughs> you know. And so, and so just those are the kind of things we want to be really, really careful. Of. Yeah. So that turns out to be a very, a very. That's one of those passionate points uh, that yeah, I have. Yeah, I noticed. Yeah. yeah. Not that that wording goes, but I'm glad you raised that objection because the, to me, the proper response to that is for me to supply the evidence that gives you concern mm -hmm. so that you don't have that concern. But yeah, I do right. think, as Nick just said, we, our subcommittee is much better positioned to weigh in on that. I would argue that we have more right to push this particular issue about what, what we find is true or not true about the Northampton Police Department. We spent time looking at it. And, and so we are in a position to comment about whether it is more or less progressive than other departments in certain ways. And I, so that's the kind of thing that I would suggest we should we, we should, but, but I, you know, I'm happy to back it up. And I think we could discuss that part. Yep. We're going to get there. We're going yep. to get there. With the, you're, you're jumping ahead because okay. this is exactly what we're going to be talking about. The only thing I need to say is, as I put this up for share, I'm the only one who can write on it because I'm using a share. I'm not using a Google Doc. So I may, I may I'll, and anything we want to put in there or change, I'm going to highlight with colors and try to keep notes on what we're talking about so we can remember what we're we've, we've discussed. Okay, here we go. Um, just a second, I need to get it so I can see it. Good, okay. Um, so uh, the first section, I crossed a lot, I crossed a lot out. Um, well, first of all, I said, the r red is my addition. I, I just um, thought that we need to put certain things in the appendix and I'm assuming, Cynthia, we will have the, uh, we will have the original charge of the commission in the, uh, Yep. Uh, in it. So yep. then I crossed out a bunch of stuff, David, not that I didn't like it. I, I like it, 
I'm assuming this is stuff that the full commission report will already include and it can be submitted. I, we can uncross it out, but, but it, well, I, I mean, it's, it's fine. I, I don't, I, I'm not uh, wedded to that. I, it just isn't specific to our, our subcommittee. Uh, I understood why you did that. And, and David told us that he wasn't going to be too um, concerned about those kinds okay. of edits. All right. so. Moving on, moving on. Uh, and, and so um, I approved, the, you can see my little check marks. I approved most of this section, which was mostly Namdi. Um, and Namdi, did you cross out your own line or did somebody else cross that out? And no, to I, review? No, no. So what, what you see, I, I was trying to, I, every, everything I did was in blue. And sometimes if I crossed out something, I tried to do that in blue too. So, so if it's crossed out- Oh, it's it something I wrote. Okay. It's, wrote the, or yeah. it's something David wrote, one of us. Okay. Just to show who, who did the edit, basically. Got it. I, okay. Uh, okay. Um, I had, all right, I'll tell you my issues with this, but I'll open it up if anybody wants to bring up uh, any comments on it, on this paragraph. Yeah, I, I, I have a couple of comments. Uh, first of all, I mean, just for purposes of length, I would not insert the errors of the interim report. You know, frankly, I didn't like the interim report and I just as soon forget about it and not bring it up again. Um, the other... Uh, uh, the other comment I have on this uh, paragraph is, I think we're being a little hard on ourselves here. Um, despite our good intentions, we must admit that our review is likely incomplete and flawed. You know, uh, I, I, I don't think I would be quite that hard. I would say, despite our good intentions, uh, our review is imperfect for many reasons, not the least of which is the time frame we have to work with. Um, so I found, you know, uh, um, I mean, that's, I can't see beyond, uh, too much beyond that. Um, and maybe I should just stop there anyway. Yeah, I, so I would say I have no objections to the, the second thing you just said, David, uh, uh, softening the, the humility that I was trying to convey with this. So maybe it's, maybe it's, too, it's, maybe it's too humble. It maybe it could be a little bit, you, you said imperfections. I'm, I'm fine with that. I do think that Somewhere in this report, uh, we should do a mea culpa about uh, errors in the first report. Although, again, I will happily agree with you, David, that we don't need to list the errors. But I do think we need to, to me, it, 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 I can, you know, I often will say things in a strong way and I feel like I need to. I'm an editor, associate editor of a top journal in the field. We make a mistake in a publication. Um, we, we apologize for it. We print a retraction. Uh, I, I know that the police department uh, was deeply insulted by these errors and uh, we, Somebody needs to sort of at least say, hey, uh, there were some mistakes made uh, in the last report. And if we don't want to do, like, have a full retraction, full-throated, whatever, at least an acknowledgement, it, it's just good ethics. So I guess that's my, my take on it. Happy not to list everything, but- Can, can, I, can I suggest that we leave it as incomplete and not flawed? <laughs> yeah, incomplete, totally fine, no problem. That's, that's fine. and, and uh... I hear what you're saying, Namdi, and I'm just wondering whether or not that's something that should be left to Cynthia and Dan in the in the final full commission report. I mean, I you know I've been pretty outspoken. I I did not like that interim report. I never voted to approve that report. So uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm happy to to uh, criticize it, but uh, I'm just not sure that we need to to do it in here. That's that's all. Sure. And, I'm, and uh, I, I, I agree, I sort of see it more in the full report as well. So if, if I felt there was some assurance that that would be addressed by the co-chairs in the full report, I would also be happy okay. to it. I think Okay, it, we'll it, leave it here for now, And uh, but I'm crossing out flawed. I have an issue with the next word, and, and that I, is, I, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Oh, I'm just, sorry, I'm very sorry. That's okay. No, I just want to say that I've, I've pressed on this particular, I, I, I never liked the report, still don't like it. Um, and I have been educated that there are a couple different sides to that story. And, um, and I wasn't involved with it. I wasn't co-chair at the time, I, you know what I mean? And so um, I think it's gonna be one of those sensitive things that we can, um, we can acknowledge that there was a preliminary report made that was maybe premature or, or whatever. But I think calling uh, attention to, to Chief Casper saying that there were 
numerous errors. Um, I, I'm afraid it's going to get to be into something. Well, you did this and you did that, and you know, I mean, that preliminary report didn't come out of nowhere, and um, so it's. Uh, <laughs> I think if we can, if you could give us the the license or the liberty to deal with it with some good language, as opposed to saying, "Yep, we know it was terrible." <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't say it was terrible. It says there were mistakes made. And, and, yeah. and so Again, my feeling is that if the full commission doesn't take responsibility for it, I, I certainly will will make noise about this issue. Yeah. Um, so just expect that. So either either the full commission takes responsibility for its mistakes in some format. Uh, acknowledge. I mean, again, you publish something, you put it into the public record with my name on it and everyone else's name on it and it's found to have errors in it, it is basic ethics that you, you acknowledge mistakes you made and, and, you, you, know, and, and you, know, you don't have to have a, a long, uh, uh, you, know, you, just, you, you just write publish or retraction. Any credible uh, publication will do that. It's, it, this is so fundamental that you know, probably isn't worth arguing about it, but you know, expect that I, I will raise it as a concern if, if, if it's not addressed in some form. And I it doesn't have to be a lot of complaint, uh, uh, taking personal responsibility, who who made the mistake? You just say mistake was made. You acknowledge mm -hmm. the mistake. Otherwise, you undermine the credibility of everything we do. Mm -hmm. I I just want to make sure you all know that there was a backstory, and that's all I wanted to. Yeah, in a sense, it doesn't matter who's responsible. You just I mean this is this is why we're in the trouble with the police department is that people are so concerned about covering their asses and who's responsible that they forget that the step one is you you, you tell people we made a mistake, and if you mm -hmm. don't do that you leave people feeling very, very uh, upset about your power. And we have power, so we have to make sure that we use it responsibly and we use it ethically. So I, what I'm hearing is that, um, because I, I'm trying to think of an efficient way to of keep us moving, that we wanna highlight this as something that needs to be in the report, although not necessarily in this paragraph. Agreed, fully agreed. And okay. So, um, so I'm going to highlight it and I will somehow note that um, uh, in, in the end, I wanna just add, do, do you feel, Namdi, that the exact errors need to be put into the report? No, no. Okay, and, and all right. David made an excellent point about it's long and I'm happy to cut it. I think just so, saying we acknowledge errors were made, you know, and I don't think we need to say, say why they were made. I think we just say that they were, that they were made. We know that they were, that they were made. So yes, I'm okay. happy to say cut, cut the list, cut the insert errors here. You can cut that. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Now I have to go back because I had an issue with um, complaining about the open meeting law. And I just wanted to use a slightly different word. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I, I mean, inefficiencies, I, it's challenging whether it's efficient or inefficient may not even be relevant. Um, uh, it, it, it's something that is required to happen and somebody decided at some point, this is what's needed. I just wanted to change it to challenges. Yeah. Um, are, people are people comfortable with that? I'll say since I wrote it, I'm happy to have it changed. I, I mean, it's, clearly I, I guess I'm expressing my frustration with the word inefficiency, but I, I hear your point. And, and I'm, you know, it, we're in compliance, and I think it's okay to, to change right. it to. I, I, I just I don't want to get distracted with you know oh with with a negative comment about open meeting that the problem is it it hasn't been easy. I mean yeah, that's it, why it, we're here tonight trying to figure figure out how to do this all together yeah. uh, at this point. And, so and, I'm yeah. gonna I'll just leave challenges in, and we'll be good. Are, are you okay with that, Cynthia and David? Um, just, just to let you know, we plan on having a section called constraints. Um, what were the constraints on us in the commission? And one of them would be the open meeting procedure process. But it's, it's um, and, you know, we've talked about putting it there, but it, I mean, it, just know that if we put it in our report, it might go somewhere else. Okay, all right. Just, okay, it's going to be in. Okay, got it. You'll, <laughs> fig you'll figure that out. All right, we're done with that then. Sure. Um, Okay, so just to clarify, anything that's in, ta in italics and that is, um, uh, you know, pulled, has, has narrower margins, I put those things in as kind of public commentary, uh, public feedback. Um, and I want to know if, uh, if people are, are comfortable with the wording of this as it stands. 
So can you scroll up a little bit? Because I can't see the, the part. Yeah, we that can't see. Can you scroll up on the document a little bit? Just wait, wait one second. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure what you're I'm seeing. Only seeing the we're only seeing the first couple paragraphs under subcommittee work. So if you scroll it up a little bit, I think we, should, we can see the part you're referring to. Is this doing it? No. No. Other way? No, we can't. It's not moving at all. That's interesting. Do you can mean you, scroll down, Nandi? Hold on. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Scroll, scroll down. Exactly. Oh, okay. Maybe, okay. Yeah, if you use your um, cursor and kind of move it, move down the document. Well, but maybe it's not if I go like this, it, why don't I see it? Damn it. This is really hard. Um, um, if you, let's see. I'm going to just do uh, something for a second. I'll, hold on. I'm, I'm going back. Hold on. Do you see it now? Yeah. Yes. I, yes. Okay. You got it. So now, now we can see the quote you were talking about, the community feedback. Can you just say your comment again, Nick? Because I lost it. I just want to know, uh, you know, read it the way it got, this got reworked. Um, uh, some members of the public held the view that since policing is inherently oppressive to minority and marginalized communities and therefore fundamentally un irredeemable, irredeemable, there was no point in examining or reforming current NPD practices. I wanted to say that there were other points of view, but I'm, I, I want to, I, I, what's most important to me is that the, to mention that there were men, oh, I'm sorry, Namdi addresses this below. He, he addresses it, he, instead of putting it in the comment, he just takes it into the next paragraph and just says, our subcommittee respectfully disagrees with this criticism. That's important for no, to agree, do we all, are we all in agreement on this? I am not sure what that means. What are we agreeing to? What, what is, uh, uh, the sentence is just not clear enough for me. We're agreeing that we're- We disagree. We're, we're, <laughs> we're saying that we, di we don't agree with the criticism by some people in the public comment that said that since policing is inherently oppressive, it's and and fundamentally irredeemable um, that there's no point in examining or reforming current NPD practice, and we seem to have been collectively. I'm agreeing with NAMD on this. We seem to have collectively been saying that we feel that it is still worthwhile, even if it's not going to to correct all problems. That it's still worthwhile trying to um, uh, uh, re uh, look for reforms that would be meaningful and examine um, the current institution. I, th I think my reaction to that is, um, why do we have to say that? Why do we have to disagree publicly with people who are passionate and emotional mm -hmm. um, about a particular topic, and that's their truth. And I just don't know if I want to be in a position to, I don't feel like I have to comment on that or react to that. Um, I can personally, um, but I don't think I need to put that in the report, because then I should be reacting to so many things that we heard. And I want to privilege that those those comments. Mm -hmm. Cynthia, Can my I... my reaction was exactly the same as yours. Uh, I in the well the ill-fated document that nobody saw, I I had <laughs> basically put the italicized paragraph and then Namdi's explanation. I would just eliminate both of them. Uh, I, I I don't see any reason to 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 single out uh, those people and and uh, justify what we did. Okay, well, I, I can go along with that. I, I, you know, I, I, I disagree, but I want to be agreeable with the with the commission. But the, I think I think the I think the rationale for having it in is 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 written clearly there. But I but I'm but I, I what I'm hearing is that 
you feel that having this in the document will be inflammatory and and might you know um, further further inflame um, you know some who who read the report. I mean, I, my take on this why it's in is I think Nick feels that we were asked we were sort of peppered with criticism specifically singled out repeatedly by many people. And, mm -hmm. and, and never answered, um, uh, you know, our whole existence was, was put into question, not just once. And so I think this is an, an effort to kind of answer that critique um, in, in a way to me that also is, is substantive because it's basically sort of saying um, uh, that, that what, co what comes from this, is, from this effort actually is an important foundational building block of the final report. It sets the stage for what about, poli you know, what about policing must remain uh, when all changes are taking place. So that's the rationale for having it. But I, I can understand, I'm, I'm sort of hearing this more like, um, even though there's a logical reason to have this here, um, it may still be that the, the effect is more negative um, th than, than whatever reason. Um, so I, I'm, I'm willing to go along to be agreeable with this. So. I am, but I, I want to know, I, I do feel that there's some value in us saying that we made an intentional decision to move in this direction. And I'm wondering if the sentence that I just highlighted, can you read it, the instead sentence? Um, if, if leaving that in, just to say, this is, the, this is what our approach was. Um, I, I, I take seriously your point that we don't have to get into the dialogue here that was referenced. Um, and, but, but I, I, I am concerned that people think that we think that, um, that re looking for reforms solves all the problems. And we're just saying, we think that reforms are still important. But what, don't, don't our recommendations speak to that? I mean, do we have to mea culpa and you know, be so skittish um, with our charge that we took seriously? I don't know the answer. I wanna, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna highlight it because I'm, I may wanna return to it, but I wanna, I'm, I'm not strongly against what you guys are saying. I think you guys are making a very good point. And I'm going to cross the whole thing out, but I'm putting it in th that piece in green just to see if I want it somewhere else. I'm just not sure. Yeah. And before you move on, Nick, I, I, I want to—I I do want to say that having heard your your reaction, I, I want to—I like your compromise position better. I like your what I think you're saying is let's cut the critique of of the public comment. Let's not draw attention to it. Let's not make it, let's not pick a fight. But let's say let's be more affirmative and say what we think the 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 goal of what we did is. You know, so keeping the second part, but eliminating the the critique of the of the public comment. So I would favor that even more uh, if there's a way to if there's a way to integrate that. And and, and I don't you know for the reasons I said, I I think I've been rather as surprised that we've had to defend, that we've had to state. I guess you know Cynthia's point is, do we need to make it say this? Isn't it implied? I, I think it's not because I think that many people have continued to question why we bothered meeting every week. I mean, you know, and I, you know so I th I think it's not evident. Obviously, lots of people who, who critiqued us repeatedly. Um, about why why we're wasting their time and ours with with this discussion about the Northampton Police Department. So to me, I think I'd like us to consider uh, whether integrating something like that uh, into the final document. So I would suggest maybe I, holding, like you said, Nick, holding it and then coming back to it. I I I'm in I am in agreement with you, Namdi. And the reason I am is that that I think that um, there are people that really think that there's no point, They we heard it, that uh, many people think there's no point in examining an institution that you don't want to make it into a better institution. And there are speakers like Alex Vitale who um, um, says that, and it's a, it's a, an interesting perspective, but it wasn't the perspective that we came from. And I just feel like, stating where we came from is worthwhile. Do, do you feel that that, uh, well, let me say that I feel that the criticism um, of our work, 
came from commissioners, fellow commissioners, as opposed to the public. Do you, do you, are you are you interpreting this as the public is wondering why we're doing this? Well, uh, yes, yes, I was because that this was a response to the italics section previously, which mm -hmm. was public comment. Uh, the commissioners, there's been no commissioner that has. I I don't have a concern really about the commissioners. I think okay. some commissioners think it's more important than others, but I okay. I I feel highly respected. Uh, and understood by, by all of the commissioners. Just wanted to clarify that. Okay. I, I still go, I go by my original comment that I don't think we need it, but you know. Uh, uh, I, I mean, I don't really wanna, you know, I don't feel the need to go to war over this, but I, uh, I agree with Cynthia. I, I just, Nandi, your, your comment does a good job of defending what we did, but in my view, it's only needed because of Nick's italicized comments. If you remove one, you can remove the other. And I think it just, it sounds too defensive. I mean, our report speaks for itself. So, you know, again, I, I think we should move on. I mean, if the, if the yeah. majority wants it in, I, it's not, you know, gonna cause me to lose any sleep tonight, but I, I just really don't see it as necessary at all. I'm, I'm gonna make it purple. Yeah, you know, let's move on. And and, and again, I, I could go either way. I'm on the fence, but I think we've made a good okay. argument for staying and a good argument for cutting. And I, and I all right. I'll, I'll still love you guys in the morning, whatever we decide, let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what we're after? <laughs> okay. Can you all see the paragraph that begins with the subcommittee? Yes. Yes. Go ahead and read it. Okay. I imagine this will be controversial. I'm, I'm, I'm in blue, so I'm curious to see what people think about, about this. And I'm, uh, yeah, so, and I this, just, I'll say it down so, so we don't, just so we don't have to fight. Like I will say that I, I, put, it, I put this here because I think it, it could be in the report, but I also could imagine that for the reasons we just discussed, people might feel like it's too um, inflammatory or too defensive. Um, There's I, you know, I, 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 you anticipated it, maybe Nandy. I, I think it is a little too defensive. Um, I, I mean, first of all, I'm not sure. I mean, I never really saw, I, I thought it was important and perhaps a little delayed in hearing from Chief Casper. I think, actually, I think many of us on this subcommittee were in favor of early votes to, to hear from her. Um, I didn't really feel the need to invite other officers. Uh, um, I thought we needed to hear from the chief. I'm glad we heard from the chief. Um, I don't know that we were necessarily slow to invite them. I mean, no, I we, so. we, we had, we took a long time getting our bearings for whatever reason. Uh, and um, I, I mean, I, I think I understand, you, you know, you, you've been very, clear on on these issues uh namdi and i think i understand where you're you're coming from i do think it's important that we express gratitude for uh, chief casper meeting with us that we acknowledge that she enlightened us as to uh, a lot of things um the, the sentence that says we are disappointed that several officers refused to speak with members uh, that's news to me i didn't know that yeah news to me news to me Yep. Okay, so, yeah, so that, I think that could be cut. That, that refers to an experience I had with several officers trying to get their, get them um, to speak to me. So I think that, that sentence for sure can come out. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, I, I will say that uh, uh, I, it is a fact that Chief, Chief Casper said this to me, as well as these other officers said to me, that the interim report coming out the way that it did, um, with the inaccuracies that were cited, uh, very, very much hurt our credibility uh, with the police department. Uh, Chief Casper told us that directly and, and changed their willingness to be cooperative uh, with us. Um, it, 
and uh, specifically that we didn't have her come and didn't invite her sort of testimony until after the interim report came out was, you know, we were criticized for that directly. And I, I think rightfully so. Um, but we were slow in lots of things. And so I'll, I'll accept your, your point that we, you know, we, we, we weren't, I think, deliberately just slow with, with getting the police perspective. But we did issue a, an interim report that I think was wanting in many ways. And one of the ways it was wanting is we didn't have the appropriate um, input from the, from the chief of police. Um, and I guess I feel like our subcommittee maybe is in a position to comment a little bit about that because we were charged with examining police policies and practices. So we got data from them but didn't get their input before we kind of did the interim report. So anyway, I, I would like to see something that kind of, um, and, and we've been directly criticized as a full commission as well for, for the poor representation of, of police on our actual commission and, and elsewhere. So I think something that kind of acknowledges that, uh, that or the, the, the lateness, I'd like to see you stay, but I, I'm totally uh, okay with cutting um, the part about um, the disappointment about officers not attending. Um, um, and, and also happy to be outvoted on that, if, if everybody feels, you know, so others can say, if, what, what else of this, if anything, do people want to see stay other than thanking Chief Casper? Nandi, I'm wondering if your concerns would be addressed if the section that talks about some of the pro problems that, that were part of the interim report if you had some opportunity to review that or to be part of that developing that section, I don't know if that's possible, Cynthia, but I feel like this doesn't belong here. I feel, I feel like we just need to just say, um, we interviewed Chief Casper, we learned a lot and, uh, uh, and that it was very helpful. Um, I, I just feel like, um, uh, the, the issue really is that the interim report was was um, uh, not our, not our best, and not, not not and didn't help some of some some things. Okay, well that's that's an understatement, but I'm I'm I'd sound I'm more than happy to concede to the majority view that this is this is not uh, seemly, but uh, doesn't belong, seems uh, not appropriate. So if, if, if does it, no one okay. who wants to <laughs> suggest that it stays, it can certainly go. Um, okay, it, we'll get back. It'll come up again, I think. I highlighted insert examples um, because yeah. uh, I want to assign it. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I'd like to go back through her, her, I meant to do this already, and I, I could take charge of doing this since I wrote that language. I, I do think this is, you know, that this comes up again and again, you know, what, is there crime in Northampton? She listed out some things. She, that was one of my questions. She listed out several things she was had dealt with recently. And I'd like to at least give some examples of that here. Um, okay. And I, I'll put that in. Okay. Uh, can you read the italics uh, paragraph? Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead. Oh, yeah, right. So I should say that the dispatch, the, what I wrote in blue is is mentioned later and again, might be cut, cut here for, for space if you decide that you'd rather, like later on you mentioned someone wrote about dispatch and put almost identically this statement, the blue stuff. David and Cynthia? Um, I don't know about um, saying we'd been under the mistaken impression um, that the decision to deploy, please, uh, I'm sorry, just- I agree. It, yeah, it seems that dispatch makes these decisions. Well, dispatch does make these decisions. It's just a little weird. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't you cut the whole thing? Because I think it comes it comes up later. Uh, I don't know who wrote the part later. David might have written it. I don't know. But it shows up later. That same idea. 
Okay. How how about the the this is relevant sentence? I would say I, I, cut the whole. I say cut all the blue stuff because I think it comes up later. Like you, someone else who wrote something about this. Okay. Page. All right. Um, cut the, uh, cut I the I thought you're you're uh, you're you okay with cutting that, David? Yeah, just cut, cut before I do it. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. So I I just want to say, I your your question of what is the systemic nature of community response? Good question. Um, uh, I, I what what about if it said the need for collaboration between agencies and departments? That's what I was referring to. Uh, that's what I was trying to say. Mm. Yeah, because I'm not sure what the systemic nature of community response. Right. It, yeah, it doesn't mean really. anything. It's it's not. It, it wasn't clear. It's a yeah. it's a. But what what if what if we put this in there? Yeah, that's. That, I think that's clearer. Is that a recommendation? Is it a, or just highlighting a? Well, a you know, actually, actually, um, it it is. It's a it's a general recommendation that there are there are people who think that a a new department could work autonomously. And I, I am a strong believer that all of this needs to be done collaboratively. And, I, and, and I'll get to that at the end of the report, but I really think that the police need, I would like to see the police, you know, they're gonna have to work with the dispatch and the police and, and, and uh, community safety are gonna have to all work together. They can't, it doesn't work if people are um, not working together because it, it will not have a good outcome. And that's why I really feel we have to start talking about collaboration early on. So it's a deliberate move to, uh, because I see it fitting in other places, you know, but mm -hmm. it's a deliberate move to start laying the groundwork for collaboration. Is that your intent, Nick? I just yes, that's it. exactly my okay. intent. Okay. And that, and that, and that, um, and then it, it was brought up, I'm also saying that it was brought up repeatedly in public testimony that, that people kept saying, well, you know, why aren't they working with social services? Why aren't they doing, um, you know, uh, uh, bringing in other agencies on this? And, and um, some people were more hopeful about that than others, but it was stated, I thought, a number of times and I felt it, it was a legitimate, um, it was a meaningful uh, reflection on what exists. And also what the gaps are, because in Kelly's testimony tonight, she so clearly said, hey, if you have a list, you know, give me that list. Or, and she also told us that a lot of people don't want that particular referral. So it, we're talking about setting a whole new climate of collaboration. Yeah. One that may not even be envisioned by a lot of folks just yet. So. David, are you okay with putting this in this this uh, phrase sure. In instead? Sure. Okay. So, right. you know, since Kelly's name was just invoked, and, and I know she's still listening, probably having dinner right now with mouth full. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I, one lingering, lingering question for me is that she was talking about uh, being licensed for certain protocols at the beginning of her comments. Yeah. For fire, for police. And, and so if we create a new set of agencies, I guess I, I'd like to understand better what this like licensing for protocols means. So she says, give us a list, but I'm wondering, is it more complicated than that? So is it not yeah. just a list, but is it a set of protocols that would then need to be licensed, um, that staff would need to be trained? I, so I, I'd like to understand there's any barriers to what we're proposing, any practical ones. And this is one that, so if, we, if Kelly can't address it now, um, if, if you can have it addressed later, Cynthia. Sure. Sure, like there's that certification, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think, so this is Kelly again. Hey. Hey, great I, Kelly. I think that it, it would be important if you were gonna have a set of protocols, then it needs to be accepted by multiple agencies. So police, fire and EMS, because they also deal with um, these kinds of calls with a dual response. Um, and I think that it needs to be some kind of certification or training. Like we have to have a very clear training program because it, I don't know how we're going to deal with it liability wise. Cause I, I know I keep going back to liability, but I don't 
God forbid, I don't want to refer someone to an agency and have something else happen. Sure. Um, so I think that there really needs to be very clear protocols. It has to be signed off and approved. Um, and like I said before, maybe it's a dual response to begin with, to try to figure out what the collaboration is going to be, what's going to work, you know, because if somebody's having a mental health crisis, we don't send a police officer, we send a clinician and now they want an ambulance. So an ambulance goes, but at what point is it um, dangerous for the ambulance to interact with somebody if they start having some kind of break? Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to put the fire department at risk either by not having an, um, a representative there from law enforcement or some kind of um, agency that's going to protect them. So I think that it also is important to involve fire and EMS in, in the conversation and the collaboration. Does that Thank make sense? No, it makes perfect sense. And I, I didn't mean to derail our editing process. As we're talking about this collaboration that Nick just brought up, I, just want, I was just really trying to highlight kind of the practicalities of that. So that was, that was helpful. I mean, just like we understand there's going to be layers of bureaucracy that has to be put into place before such a collaboration would, would get into place. So thank you so much, Kelly, for that. Absolutely. I'll, I'll try to resist uh, pulling you from your dinner while we go back. Okay. <laughs> it's fine, right. it's cooking. <laughs> okay, moving along. Uh, uh, so uh, in, we're now in addition we're to, to that section. I don't know if you can read the entire paragraph. Yeah, but the stuff, the we can. To, yep, read it. So my comments are, um, I, I don't have a problem with anything except I would eliminate the last sentence. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'm not sure that I would use the word exemplary. Um, certainly a good relationship uh, uh, with the NPD. And, and again, Nambi, I understand where you're coming from here. I, um, I, I am in agreement insofar as I do not want to be viewed as, you know, that this is a, a war against the Northampton Police Department. I don't see our work that way at all. Um, and uh, on the other hand, um, I, I, think, I, I think the last sentence uh, goes a little too far for me. Okay, well, I, I, sorry, I'll just can speak to it because go ahead. I, I agree. I mostly agree, except um, uh, I think we can come up with another word than exemplary. And I, it's, it, there's no point in saying this is one of many examples unless we give many examples. And, and that's not what we're trying to do here. So I'm okay with dropping the last sentence um, and, and changing exemplary. I do want to say that um, it's the, the Northampton police do um, stand out in, in the, to some extent, I, but we don't want to make it sound, there, there's still many, many shortcomings about the system, uh, the, about the police. And the fact is, 
I mean, I could, I can tell you, the police should have gotten social workers embedded ye years ago. I mean, it, it, it really, that's what should have happened. Um, uh, and that didn't happen. And now we're looking for other solutions entirely. Um, although that still may happen. But so I'm just saying it, it's a strong word. On the other hand, the Northampton police um, have been uh, 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 more uh, attuned. And I think it's largely because of the deinstitutionalization de de of the state hospital, but they've been much more attuned to the needs of mentally ill than other police departments. And I, I know that personally. Yeah, I, I, I don't quarrel with that. I, 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 I was a little surprised that there is no policy. Um, but nonetheless, despite the fact that there is no policy, I would agree that it's laudable that the Northampton Police Department often does consult with CSO on Section 12s. There, there's a, a, an un, unwritten policy. Um, okay. It, it, I mean, it, it, it's, they all do it. Um, I, I don't think it's in writing. Actually, um, CSO was trying to, uh, at one point, to encourage them to do what other police departments do, but I, that, that's not currently the case. Um, but it, it, it's been a consistent practice at, at, at the North Hand, and it's been a part of the leadership. It's, they, have, they have advocated right from the beginning. Um, so we need an, another word besides exemplary. How about just simply saying that they are um, uh, more more willing or better than other area police departments? Um, where did she just? I mean, this is literally what she told us. She said that that they they they're I mean outstanding in comparison to better um, or more likely than other than than almost every other department to uh, concede or you know to the CSO recommendation. Um, again, uh, yeah. You know, I mean, any language like that is fine with me. Okay. Positive, they were as positive instead of exemplary. Yeah, it's important that it, what, I, what I'm insisting on here is that is that they were cited as being better than every other department in the area. That, that, yeah. I don't want anything that, 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 that uh, diminishes that point. Um, so to say that they're good and okay is it really misses the point. But I'm more than happy to say that we haven't provided many examples and, it, and that goes too far. Um, I, I think it does violence to Jenny Cox's testimony to suggest that she merely said they were okay or good. She said they were better than all the other departments that she deals with. No, that, I, that's accurate. I agree with that. Is that better? Yeah. Does that do it? Fine. And cut the last sentence. I can explain my piece if you want. But. Yeah, I suppose, Nick, what, maybe you could, exp um, I, I guess the case, since the, the testimony of the Wildflower Alliance spoke to the full commission, um, I guess there's a, question about why this is an hour report, um, why you thought it was important to include it in our report. Oh, um, because the question of using peers came up with Jenny Cox, uh. and the role of peers was, was raised, and, um, and uh, I that is a really good question because I said right at the beginning, is this in our lane? Um, I feel this is an, 
this overlaps lanes, but I, I do feel that um, we are talking about police roles and, and peers are, are already present. I thought it was important to say, and I don't know if other people will be doing this. It's, I, I guess they will saying what peers are. That might be duplicative, um, but we don't know. And I would say I would want to leave this in until I knew it was being addressed elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, hopefully it is addressed in the in the in the um, alternatives. I mean, it's certainly an important alternative. But, but I, I I also think that you, what you added is important because we had testimony by a peer who works works at a FIA describing a very very touching and and warm connection with somebody, but when that person became belligerent and, and, um, and uncooperative, um, the peer felt that he could no longer work with that person and, and, and left the person. And I, I thought that that was an example of what you're referring to. Yeah. And, and, and so that, that's why I added. So to me, what the, the value added here is, you can see what, what I put there, is just to try to talk about what, to make the case for why, why we would still need to have some kind of police, under, under what circumstances we would need. It would be stronger if we had something that actually specifically cited the Northampton police, like if they already had a relationship with Wildflower Alliance, some other peer group. And I mean, in, in sense, stronger in the sense of justified in our, in our, our report. But um, and I'm curious what other people think, whether they think this belongs in this or not. I I, I could go either way. So I'm good. I I would like to say that I I feel that I want it in there it, 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 unless it gets preempted because it's duplicative. Yeah, I, I guess I mean I'm sort of viewing this document kind of like I'm not sure what we're doing. It's sort of a rambling of everything. <laughs> it doesn't have a, you know. So we got the peer and then we have Smith and then, so um, it seems like it's a little out of place, but I, I don't have any uh, with the wording of it. I don't have any problem with it. I don't know what the, where the right place is unless it's incorporated into the Jenny Cox testimony paragraph above. Um, I could, I, I could, um, I could try to, um, insert it into the paragraph above. I just wanted to make a reference to that we, yeah, we, yeah. we did get feedback from the Wildflower Alliance on the use of peers uh, in responding to mental health crises. Yeah, I mean, it's a good point and it might come up again in another committee's report, you know, and it might yeah. fit there. Right, so this, so this would might be, you know, Cynthia, earlier on you said that, you know, as you're trying to put together all these things into one report, uh, there'd be places of duplication. So I, I think if it turns out that the Wildflower Alliance is already covered in some other place, it sounds like Nick said that he'd be more than happy to not have it here, as long as it as long as it was described elsewhere. Is that true, Nick? Did you did you basically say? Yeah, that? yeah, I'm I'm fine with that. This does not have to go here. And, and just to be clear, also, Nick, it, it, you know, I said earlier also that there's certain wording that I'm sort of attached to. Like, are you, is there something about this wording? It, you simply want to introduce the Wildflower Alliance, describe it as a peer group that we heard from. And is there right. anything- I also else? think it's important to explain what peers are. Many people don't know what a peer is. This, right. the, my, the, the definition I gave comes from the Wildflower Alliance. Yeah. I'm pretty certain that this will come, come up in the alternatives, but I'm totally okay with having it here until, uh, until that Shows up, but I, I'd be surprised if, if the alternatives people did not. Cynthia, do you, can you just kind of keep it in mind, and yeah. we'll all watch for it later. Okay. okay. So you know, I added this is sort of in the same spirit of people that, that we heard from. So I, as a commissioner, heard from them. I we got a written thing. I shared it with everybody. And to me, I think, you know, and, and I'm, I work at Smith College, uh, so it's something that I have some expertise with, 2,500, you know, students. So uh, anyway, so I, to, I, I'm sure, Cynthia, you sounded like you were raising objection and found this. I'm not sure if, if you, if this strikes you as a, a not belonging, but I'm, I'm free. No, I'm, I was just trying to find, uh, you know, when I think of um, any other institution in town that has a something similar to a police force or a safety force. The other one is um, Cooley Dickinson Hospital. 
Right. And um, and I know um, I think Nick has tried to get a statement from them or has approached I, them. I did get unique... a statement. Just got the number of people of, of calls they made last year, five hundred and thirty. Oh, okay, okay. So again, two institutions with unique missions that are vulnerable, that have a security force of some kind. You know, I mean, uh, and and probably have some interaction. With, with the NPD. So um, I, I'm not sure if it's, um, I would agree with the yellow comment that I'm you know, going into J January 6th and how this is a campus that's primed for a resurrection or an insurrection or whatever. I'm not sure I would go that far, but um, there might be a rationale for that. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, again, I think Chief Casper as I say in the next sentence, uh, said she has those worries. I'm not sure that I, we need to explicitly reference January 6th. Um, I would say that that certainly is more uh, tenuous. Um, uh, I'm concerned about it. Um, and I think the, you know, but if others think that that's too far a stretch or, or would, you know, uh, further raise the risk for the college, um, that, that might be another complaint about it. Um, but the rationale for having that is really making the case that, and, 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 and with all due respect to my, my, uh, my, my fellow commissioner, uh, Nick, uh, when he likened uh, Smith College to a supermarket, um, I found that, you know, and, and, and he and I have talked about this offline, and I know he, there are probably some many things that he meant, but for me, knowing the institution inside out, and I think about the job of policing Smith College and the kinds of challenges that the college faces, you know, to me, it, it's, it's more appropriate to say what Cynthia said, that, that, that it's more like Cooley Dickinson Hospital or a place that has certain kinds of special needs of policing. Um, and and I, just I just was wanting to provide some really clear statement that this is not just a kind of a woman's college where people are just idyllically hanging around and picking flowers, but that things happen of political significance on this campus all the time. And one is happening right now, happened last week that I'm not sure everyone knows about. Um, and, and, and I thought it was worth putting that in. I, mean, I think it's notable that the New York Times, Fox News, and other major outlets were talking about Smith College as a center of, of, of uh, you know, discriminating against white people. I mean, and that, that is truly what has been happening recently. Um, so anyway, that's, so that, that's my rationale for highlighting that. Yeah, my, my thoughts about this whole paragraph are, um, you know, what you say is true, uh, Namdi, yet, you know, I... I mean, I've lived here for 30 some years. Uh, I don't recall a situation at Smith College that required armed police officers to respond. Um, uh, and and um, I, I'm a little concerned about this. Uh, uh, um, well, let me, let me try to articulate this a different way. I mean, my concerns about Smith College are absorbed in the, the broader concerns that Chief Casper um, articulated. Uh, and, and I think for me, the biggest takeaway from what I heard from Jody Casper was this whole idea that if you trim down the number of officers on duty at any particular time, you endanger the ability to get an appropriate and rapid response. Um, that does concern me, whether it's at Smith College or anywhere else, that, the that there be sufficient police to respond uh, to an emergency. For the kind of thing that you're talking about here, Nambia, you know, a mass demonstration or something like that, you're never going to have enough police. Um, there's always going to be a requirement to enlist the state police or some other mutual aid agreement. So while for me, I want to acknowledge uh, that I really, I, I felt moved by that uh, uh, part of Chief Casper's uh, uh, testimony. Um, and to a lesser extent by what Jenny Fleming Ives said at the public uh, hearing, the ability of the police to, when you do need them, to be able to respond quickly uh, and efficiently, you, you, you may sometimes need more than one officer to respond. Um, uh, but at the same time, I don't want to go from that to buying into, well, we can't reduce the police force in size at all, because what if we had a 
January 6 type event at Smith College. Um, so, Fair, fair enough. And, and, and the idea, you know, in general, the, the problem of, of maintaining a police force, um, whatever cost it has for, you know, a rare January 6th like event, it, it doesn't seem like a very uh, practical kind of thing. So I, 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 I definitely hear your argument. Um, I guess what and so and for that reason, if you, if you think that the highlighted section uh, about January 6th uh, should should go, um, I think I think it's sufficient to say that she's concerned about me, you know, recent that that, that might be enough. Um, and, I guess what I would suggest is I'd like to see our document um, report Chief Casper's perspective on this, maybe citing it as her perspective on this, and maybe if we wanted to express some skepticism about it. So in other words, I, I think um, I don't want to see this. I don't want to see that perspective omitted. I think that testimony was important. David, you said you were moved by it, and I think whoever reads this report would benefit from considering that testimony. But I'm totally fine with skepticism being raised. The the point that you make, David, that um, uh, you know, uh, that, that if there was such a big event, we would probably need to rely on others. I think that's totally fine. But I think as people begin to think about cutting budgets, I'd like to have that argument from the chief heard by whoever's considering that along with a skeptical or counter argument. Something like that to me would be, would be, a, would be a, a responsible thing for us to do is to kind of share that, um, that point. Cynthia, do you want to add anything? Um, I, I think it's more about, uh, for me, it's more about honoring um, what Chief Casper said about this particular situation, as opposed to um, devoting so much space to it, um, to the college itself. Um, you know, I'm, I'm walking on eggshells by saying that, but, but I'm trying to fold it into the mission of our particular subcommittee. It, it may be in another section that talks about these other vulnerable places in town, you know, if we want to regard Smith as, as vulnerable. So, um, I, I mean, I, I, you know, there also could be a, a section about, because Chief Casper came to our subcommittee about what we learned from her and what some of her concerns were and, you know, in a section of its own. So, um, so I think my, my general reaction is that we're devoting a lot of space to it. And I want to make sure it, it is in with the purview of what I think our charge was. So I can take a, a crack at, at making it less wordy. It's, it's, you know, it's likely wordy because I know a lot about it and, and, and care a lot about it. Um, I, I'm not convinced, Cynthia, about what you said, that, that, that you actually have a plan for where else it would be. You, know, you said it might appear. And, and, and yeah. that said, yeah. in my mind, it wouldn't be good enough. I, I think that the college is a major player in town and the kind of the, the hand waving that it might appear is, is, you know, I think it needs to appear. And, and, and here it appears having to do with the relationship with the existing relationship with the Northampton Police Department, which is our subcommittee's charge. It is very specific. Um, it's not just about vulnerable places. It's about, it's about, a relate, it's about uh, the services that the Northampton Police provides. One of the things they provide is extra backup for the Smith College campus. And, and that, that's, but I can certainly imagine saying this with less words and, and, uh, and, and making sure that we preserve uh, Chief Casper's. Um, so uh, the, the college doesn't need to be described in the way I describe it. I can certainly get this to be brief. I, I would also, um, I'm not in very comfortable ground here, Namdi, but um, as I've learned from my colleagues on the commission, yeah. after being slapped around quite a bit about privilege, yeah. um, Smith, Smith he, he, um, exemplifies privilege to me um, as a college. And um, so I just say that, you know, if we highlight this particular security issue, when we have other folks saying that they don't feel secure, I just want to be careful of the, of the optics of that, if I can put it that way. Well, thank you. I appreciate you, you know, raising that. Um, and, I, and I guess, you know, my general instinct to that is to uh, make visible all the constituencies of relevance. Let's not make invisible, uh, you, know, uh, you, you know, this idea that we don't talk about Smith because, because there are other constituencies. I, I'd rather talk about the other constituencies. I'd, I'd rather make sure we talk about everybody and have an approach that, that meets all the needs. Um, but, but I can imagine taking less room. I think it's a fair criticism and I'm, I, I, will, I will work on shortening that section. I, I, I agree. I, I'd like you to shorten it, Namdi. And I do not, I feel very strongly about not putting anything in about the Capitol riot. I feel it's 
can, it's a it's a little bit incendiary and confusing. It's just it yeah. it I just feel it derails the message a little bit, uh, and uh, so I I would like that left out. Otherwise, yeah. I also if you can make it generic to some extent and talk about not just Smith but Smith. Um, I mean, it could happen at the courthouse. It could happen. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it could happen during a, a Trump rally. It could happen. Uh, uh, you know, there there could be an incident that that I mean, we could have an incident that we think that, geez, you know, this happens in other cities, and then you would have it. So I just think that. Um, uh, that, that there it needs to be made more more generalized if possible. Yeah, I'll work on that. But I, I respectfully Thank disagree. You. I, I can make again to the point that Smith College is 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 a is a place of national significance, international significance. It is not the Northampton Courthouse. It is not Stop and Shop. You know, um, and 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 the very the privileges that Cynthia cited a few minutes ago um, are there's a reason for that. And, and so so I think I think so I, again shortening it makes sense to me, but I, I really. Uh, disagree with the idea of somehow making Smith invisible um, as, a, as a special, a, as a particular kind of place that's in Northampton that, yeah. that you can thought. And, it's and a big so, part of the city. But it, but it shouldn't be outsized uh, compared to other things that, you know, in the document. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, so I am, you're okay with uh, taking yeah, cut this? That. Cut, cut the though. capital. That's, that, that's right. okay. really okay. Yeah. okay. Next paragraph. comments. So is this based on the assumption that perhaps um, a new service wouldn't have a 24 hour presence? I just want to understand that. Yeah, I guess I, I wrote most of, I guess most of this paragraph and I, and, um, I um, was uh, just wanting to flag that the, the, so we're trying to make a case for what services need to remain, which ones need to be cut. And I, I think this dimension of 24 or seven, um, in fact, you know, in, in the testimony we just heard from Kelly earlier today, she described, you know, certain kinds of 24, like water services and, and certain people who, who, she, who can be uh, on call 24 seven. And I guess I just wanted to make sure that that element and it also sort of speaks to you know the the patrol. Like what, you know, why, why is it that cops are showing up at emergencies, uh, medical emergencies? So it just tries to kind of reveal what I feel I learned on our subcommittee, uh, and, and that and that whoever's planning the, the replacement has to have these parts in mind. Staffing at twenty four hours and providing some kind of I think David was one who said that he, he was uncomfortable with the idea of cops ri you know, riding, riding around town armed. When so that leads to the idea that well you then would need an unarmed somebody driving around town to be able to be available, you know, if there was some kind of medical emergency. Right, I, I, I mean, I, uh, uh, or, or, or whatever, I mean, you know, one, I guess, 
the biggest takeaway I had from Kelly's testimony earlier is almost everything she talked about didn't seem to me to require an armed police response, but it requires a response. I mean, we want uh, our community to respond to uh, all these problems. And I mean, to the extent that you're articulating here, Namdi, to emphasize that you know, these, these issues do require response and to the extent that police are removed from these activities, it needs to be replaced by people uh, who are available 24 seven. And, and if that's the point of the paragraph, then I agree with it. I'm okay with the first sentence and the rest of it, I think is just the weeds. I think it, it's gonna have to get addressed no matter what plan comes up. I think it's worth saying that right now we have a 24 hour service and that community problems happen 24 hours a day. And, uh, but there's, the, we don't, you know, the, the, the initial uh, alternative might just be a supplement during the day, you know, or it may eventually become people in uh, uh, cars with lights and sirens. I mean, you know, I, I don't know, uh, but it's, I just feel like it's the weeds and I just feel it's not, it doesn't <clears throat> inform our, our subcommittee report. I don't feel that it, it, it adds anything to it. Okay. Um, sounds like, uh, Cynthia, do you, do you disagree with any of that? Because I'm, I'm happy to go along. Um, no, I think I, I don't disagree with any of it. Yeah. Okay. I, I think saying, I think saying the statement though, that it's apparent that there needs to be a 24 presence is, is to me the the, um, um, the most important part. Of it. Yeah. Yeah, this is the kind of thing, like, to me this falls in the category of like what Nick said earlier about the um, uh, the peer support. Like, I, I hope that something like this appears elsewhere because I, actually I, I, in writing this, I was basically trying to communicate to the alternatives people who, who are describing, who need to describe alternatives that are 24 seven and the budget people who are who need to think about whatever you know th that you have to staff and pay people for 24 hours um, in shifts. I think that so that was that was news to me in the same way that many of you said that how dispatch works was news to you. Um, I found myself really thinking about the implications of the shift work that you have to have you know x numbers of people times the three shifts and the anyway. So that that's but that's not our that's not our subcommittee. And so I'm more than happy to have somebody else take that up and, and cut this from here. Do you want to leave the first sentence in and and uh, maybe uh, the the first yellow sentence? Yeah, maybe that that would be good. Yeah, it just sounds good. You know, and and, and again, okay. and, and I'm more than happy to, to have all of that subsumed in some other sub like if you know, okay, since we'll see. All right, elsewhere, then just move it. Okay, uh, services summary. This chart came from Dan Kennedy. I am. I need to verify with Dan that the numbers are correct. Um, I don't want to put out information that isn't accurate. Uh, so I will review it with Dan. But, um, uh, and, and uh, I also made the uh, assumption, because I don't know what, you, uh, David, I don't know what UCR crime is and non-UCR crime, but I, I put in uh, UCR crime is an active uh, crime in progress. And I thought non-UCR is means it's not reportable, that it's 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 a crime related activity, but it's not the actual crime itself. Oops. You know, hey. I, I think UCR means uniform crime report, but it is. I, it is. It's an FBI thing. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't really understand the significance. But that's it. how they categorize it. They go by that 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 categorization. But yeah. this these are is this it? So the question is: Is this chart? Um, does it uh, um, help our? Um, is it informative, or is it so so generic that it's superfluous? I I think it is somewhat informative because it just gives you a general sense of where police energy is going. Nick Dan's hand is raised. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, so um, just to give a little- Your Timing uh, is good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, um, so the, the categories that are, that are sort of missing is the UCR1 crime. So that's like 
the so like they 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 categorize part one, part two, part three. Um, so part one is like the the like what everyone is sort of talking about. We talk about an emergency. So um, like a aggravated assault. So we really specific aggregate aggravated assault, not just regular assault. Um, so uh, like assault with a deadly weapon, murder. Um, isn't that UCR crime? That's UCR. Uh, so the, what says UCR one? one? It, 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 it should say UCR one crime, right? So that's like the most, like that. That's the most dangerous, the most, the most important. There, the non UCR one crime are the things that are still crimes, um, but that don't fall within that. Um, one of the huge things to note about this, though, <laughs> um, so um, the Northampton, uh, they gave us the report. Um, it's called. Uh, 2015 to 2019 man hours um, by call. Um, they don't distinguish between a lot of the individual crimes. So that, that's actually probably an overestimate uh, because all assaults are included in that. Whereas uh, really only aggravated assaults should be, um, you know, so like there's, there's probably an overestimation, um, but there's also the other caveat that you have here as well, which is that the police's reporting system doesn't allow multiple tagging for <laughs> responses. So, you know, if there were two things happening at the same time and it only got coded for one, um, you know, we, we've missed that data as well. And this is a limitation. Um, it, it's, a, it's a huge limitation um, in terms of what we so, can say. So like, this is a gross estimate. I just want to throw that out there. Yeah, um, I, well, um, I, I, I say just above, I said the breakdown is based on various reports and should be considered inexact and only a broad picture. And I, I, I think it, it could be helpful as a broad picture if we think that it, it ha, it, it, it's roughly accurate. Um, I think, oh, there he is. Um, uh, would you agree that it, it, it has broad applicability, Dan? Yeah, I mean, I think it gives us, I think it gives us a good idea of sort of what these calls are and what's happening. Um, very, very, very generically um, that, you know, we still want to staff for, um, you know, those, those big time emergencies, um, or those large, those, those really dangerous crimes. Um, but we do have to understand that that's a small part of that. And we could have I would say we could have responders that are doing a lot of this to take the burden off um, yeah. of police right. in a lot of ways. Um, but this is just this is just a, a picture. It's not we're not drawing any conclusions from it. It's just a picture so that people know um, uh, when we're talking about medical that it's you know it's it, it's in the eight to ten percent range. It's not it's not in the fifty percent range. And animals they're under ten percent. Uh, traffic, you know, it's about a fifth of the work. And it, it, is that, I mean, that's the only purpose, the only reason to put this in there is if we feel it, it, it reflects that to some extent. <clears throat> um, do we, I, 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 let's keep moving. I, if anybody yeah, so uh, at any point says this is just not helpful, or it's not relevant, or it's not in our lane, we can remove it. So it, it. It seems like one way to, to nicely summarize the essential core mission of our subcommittee. You know, it's, it's one way to reflect it. And, and so I, it, I think it's well justified. Um, yeah. Now that you're presenting it this way, you know, uh, and, and because I, I never have a problem with adding more words, you know, I always like to make this point that we don't want to be misled uh, by, by what these numbers appear to tell us. So what police officers spend the most time doing isn't necessarily the core critical things, things that are rare are nonetheless extremely important to the community, right? So, so, so the two are not, so it's great to sort of show, see this, it's, it's relevant, but it doesn't tell the whole story. And maybe right. something that shows, that show, that says that, that says there's a, there are other ways to think about the work that, that police do, you know? Um, but this is, this is one important way and an obvious way and fair way. Okay. And I have, I have caveats in there. I mean, I, 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 I say pretty clearly in several spots that this is not exact numbers. This is just a, a broad, broad picture. All right, moving on. Uh, let's do this paragraph here. Oh 
going to highlight something. So again, given the feedback from uh, other sections, I imagine that uh, people will find this to be too supportive or too strong in, in the support of the police um, in, in, in the wording. And again, I again will preemptively concede that uh, cutting words, being less, um, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm open to that, um, especially the parts about the overwhelming um, information about the um, most progressive in the, in the region. Um, I do, I do think that, you know, again, our, wherever we can highlight positive practices that we observed. And one example of something we don't say in our report that I think is, is worth saying is the effort that the website makes to be transparent with data, present data. Though we found flaws in the data that was there, we, I think, noting, I mean, there are some specific things that are objectively true about the ways in which the department, um, and, and I think the department would like credit for. And, and since we were the ones who looked at them, I think something that sort of says we found certain things to be in place that are Im impressive and, and better than other places while still noting, you know, areas for improvement. Yeah, I mean, you know, you anticipated my criticism, Nambi, Nambi. Um, you know, I, I, I have, I, I do have a problem saying it's one of the most progressive departments in the region. I, I really don't feel I know that. I feel like we have a good chief and I feel like, uh, who is, I think, a progressive thinker. And, uh, and I feel like we have a, uh, a, a, a departmental structure um, on paper that, that uh, is, uh, uh, is, uh, articulates the right things. Um, but, you know, this goes back to one of our early meetings in which I said, you know, what's on paper and what actually happens on the street are sometimes two different things. Um, so, uh, um, and, and, you know, I, I, I do think it's appropriate to acknowledge at some point that we, we do acknowledge that there are no recent incidents of Northampton police discharging their weapons. Uh, or engaging any in any of the egregious human rights violations uh, that, that have plagued other communities. However, um, we, we need to recognize that we're not immune from that either. Um, so, you know, I, I, again, I, I, I appreciate your efforts in this regard, Nambi. I, I just think they go a little too far uh, for me. Um, yeah. but, I, but again, you know, I, I know I've said this probably three times. I, I really do want to make clear that, you know, it, speaking for me personally, and I think this subcommittee and hopefully the whole commission, I mean, I'm not at war with the Northampton Police Department. This is not about Chief Casper or any individual officer of the Northampton Police Department, as far as I'm concerned. We're talking about policing and, and a, a policing policy that really has nothing to do with uh, 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 any individual or even the department. So are you, are you offering to rewrite that, Namdi? Or? Yeah, I think, I, I, yes, yeah, so let, me, let, me, let me officially offer to rewrite this, uh, to, to, to tone it down uh, in, in, in line with the feedback that, uh, that you've just uh, given me um, and, and, and any other feedback that others would like to, like to add um, uh, about this. You know, I, I think, um, and it, yes, I'm trying to think what, is there anything else that I, that I wanna say here? Um, yeah, I, I guess I, I just want to make sure that we are explicit 
in in any in any praise we feel is deserved of the department because I, I my understanding of police psychology in general and and what I've had in terms of my conversations with these officers in particular is that this hill will go down a lot easier and we'll get more cooperation if if we are clear because what happens is when we're not clear we leave open the impression that we for example are calling the Northampton Police Department racist now um, I think we've had this conversation that it's not that they're not racist it's that they are probably no more racist than any one of us sitting in this room uh, uh, in this virtual room um, or, or if so we haven't seen a lot of evidence that that's true and, and, and yet there's been a lot of allegations in that direction and it does matter if we if we essentially uh, clarify that we, we don't see them as the equivalent of the the policing we saw happen to George Floyd I, I think it's worth saying that I think not saying it, um, it uh, adds harm and, and um, undermines the cooperation that we will want from the police department in implementing uh, this commission's work um, and I think our subcommittee is the only one that's going to do it so um, and, and maybe I'm the only one in the subcommittee who's going to say it. And I'll point out I'm the black man in the subcommittee who, who who's making the point that we need to be fair and, and, and open uh, on matters of race. Because since I brought up my race, let me just sort of say this whole process got started, you know, as a as a racial argument. And I think if we aren't if we aren't clear about the ways in which um, the reforms that we're suggesting are mostly motivated by complaints about houseless people and, and the mentally ill and not much at all about race. Um, I think we, again, we, we, we will have told a lie of omission um, that, that I think does harm to our credibility. Um, so let me just you know, have that said. Um, and if you disagree, you're welcome to say you disagree, but that, that is my position and I think I'm pretty um, clear about that. I'd like to comment. Yeah. Um, I, um, I would like you to rewrite it. I do like what you're trying to do, but, um, and I, I even like, I, you know, I'm willing to work on it with you, but I, it, I think it needs to be done a little bit differently. I have a little bit of an, it may be more than a little bit of an issue with suggestions for reform should not be taken as implying that the NPT has been found guilty of uh, the types of violations uh, that took the life of George Floyd. Um, that could change in a minute. Um, and and it's, a, it's, a, it's not even clear what that sentence is saying. It's, it's, it's not even clear um, uh, what the human rights violations were and that we don't engage in any of them. So I, I just, I, I just, I just, I feel like it, it needs to be reworked. Yeah. I do, I do feel like it needs, it, it's worth saying that, uh, um, th that our police department has um, some excellent um, uh, uh, relationships with the community, some excellent um, examples of uh, efforts to be, um, uh, responsive uh, to to mentally ill, and particularly in particular, uh, the only other thing I would add is uh, uh, community workers, such as social workers. Uh, that <coughs> actually uh, came from David's line. I just think it, we need to either not say anybody, or we have to in include other kinds of community workers too. It's just uh, uh, I, I, I just feel um, we want to address. Uh, uh, I, I'd leave that out. I'd just say community workers. Uh, you know, I, 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 that, that's what I would do with that. But that, that's my opinion on this. I, I feel th that the, it's the right idea, but I, I, it hasn't said, been said quite correctly. Yeah, sure. Happy to, okay. happy to tone, tone it down. And, and, and I, you know, take you up on Nick on us working on it together. So yeah. I'll, take a stab, I'll take a stab at reducing it and more than happy to have you words, words sniff it. Yep. Uh, Sounds good. Sounds and good. If I could just um, say that I, I, I really do agree with every, everything that everyone said on this particular section. And I just wanted to offer that um, my only way of feeling free in this whole process is as opposed to um, pitting a department against a group of people and, and all these, these other traps that we can find ourselves in is, is is basically two things, and the one is safety. I want safety for all members of our community, 
And the second thing is, is that I, I want to reimagine policing. And I, those two things are the things that kind of keep me going, you know, that we actually could reimagine policing. And we have so many examples now around the country that's doing that. And I also think, I think it was Javier or someone just said it, if we can't do it here, then where in the hell can we do it, you know? And, and I'm a Chief Casper fan to some degree, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and I think yeah. we've got this fertile ground. We've got a lot of good pieces in place. So I think about some people feel safe in this community and many people do not. And I want, I want everyone to feel safe and see how we can reimagine versus reform. So I just offer that. Mm. I agree on both of those points. Okay, I, I'm, uh, I'm taking a, 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 a time check here. It's 8.40. Yeah. Um, we've got lots more to go through. How do we want to do it? Do we want to have another meeting? Do we want to take a break? Do we want to just keep charging ahead? What, what are people feeling like? Is most of the, because I can't scroll down, is most of what else is left um, are basic. Yeah, the, the, a lot of the rest of it is the list that we all agreed to before. So it seems to yeah. me like um, that if we could we could get through the, you know, you warned us about staying late. I'm, I'm willing to stay a little late. And, and I think that we don't have much more that we haven't all seen before and discussed. There's, there's really not that much. So it's just, you know, I, I, like I wrote another, there's another blue paragraph for me that, may, that probably will, inspire some feedback, but I think the rest of it is. Um... Yeah, the, most of it we all agreed on actually. Um, uh, I don't think anybody got to the end parts that I put in there and I, I'd like to. I read all the way through it, Nick, all the way to the end. I, I just didn't have a lot to say about that, you know. Um, okay. I mean, I, I read everything and I, um, I mean, some of it duplicates the earlier parts, but I didn't feel the need oh, to. Oh yes. Um, yeah. Uh, this, this was duplicative. I didn't actually read David's section on this. Uh, before I read it, uh, the policy on citizen complaints. Yeah, uh, I have. I'll I'll take another look at that and try to combine the two. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing I want to just say, and then I'll go back is under strategic planning. One one of the um, a member of the public wrote today about um, changing the the mission statement, and I feel that that's a really um, that fits right in with the strategic planning thing. And I'd like to just add a little piece in there as well about that. Um, it's a small, but I think important element of reform. And uh, um, I, I would like to change that um, uh, if people are okay with that. No objection to that. I didn't read it, but you're saying that you're gonna recommend on our behalf that the, that the Northampton Police Department change its mission statement. Is that, well, they, is that yes, right? that they add something to the mission statement. The call, the uh, the person in the public wrote um, uh, adding something in the mission statement that uh, uh, that addresses the reason for our report, and that is, you know, something about um, uh, trying to. Uh, he, I, I'm not good with the words on this. Whether it was racial equity or uh, uh, or. Um, or exactly how he said it, I don't. I don't recall, and I can even take a look at it. But I thought it was it was an excellent suggestion that the mission needs to be more than than just um, uh, than just keeping people safe. It's got to go broader than that. There there are other community um, needs that go along with keeping people safe, and uh, it's a, it's kind of a traditional police <coughs> mission. Uh, uh, we're, what's the timing on this, Cynthia? When, when does, when, when no, does this need? It, it was supposed to be done Friday. So, um, I, and, you know, I think we're really, yeah, that's all I if, can say. If we, if we polished it up over the next two days, could it, would it have any value or is, is it then too late? Is it already too late? Well, I, I mean, you know, we only have so many hours in the day. I don't know what people's energy level is. And we have, we've made a lot of changes. Um, I'm I, gonna, I will update my, many of the changes tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I can, I can do the same. Um, and maybe even like later tonight, the ones you asked me to change already. But 
But as far as looking at the rest of the document, I mean, Nick, do you feel like you 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 personally want a break, or do you want to stop the meeting now? Like, where, where no, I'm right. I'm willing to continue. I'm willing. It's it, it it's a slog, but I'm willing to continue. I think we might be able to do this fairly quickly, actually. Now that you pointed out that a lot of it was, there wasn't controversial. Yeah. Uh, right, this so paragraph. Heard, this no. section here. I don't know what people uh, you asked for simplification and probably uh, less words. It sounds like what the whoever wrote that simplify thing. Um, but I felt there was a need to, try to, to sort of make explicit this point that, that David really injected into our meetings um, that, that what isn't made explicit anywhere, that we adopted this philosophy about the smaller footprint, basically. And I kind of feel like that idea needs to be directly sold. Um, you know, I, I have the skeptic in mind. <clears throat> yeah, I, th I think it's a good point. Uh, Nambi, I like uh, I, I like the way you state it plain, as they say. You know, um, uh, I think we do. I think we do need to be up up front that that's sort of hopefully an overriding um, point of agreement. Uh, is that we just? I mean, what I what I've tried to articulate throughout is the the understanding that. Um, better training practices, better education, better hiring practices don't work. And that therefore the only thing that does work is to eliminate the uh, number of armed police um, interactions with, with the citizens <laughs> of, of any stripe. Um, so I, I, I like the way you start out there. I hadn't actually made my way through the whole paragraph. Uh, so let me say, actually speak, speak, this is actually, you made a real just, real um, reminding me about why I think it's so important to have something like this. And actually I'm gonna make a case for why it, it, it shouldn't be too brief, but it doesn't need to be all these particular words. Um, I guess what you just said about the training doesn't work. I, 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 you know, you probably heard pushback from me and others about this and many people feel differently about this point. Um, the trouble is being too pithy, saying training doesn't work. Um, what do you mean by work? And it, so I, what I'm getting at here is that if you were to say that no amount of training um, could guarantee that a George Floyd type event could not happen in Northampton, then you would get my agreement and probably a unanimous agreement. Um, if you, you know, as a social scientist, when you ask me, uh, does intervention work? I think in terms of statistical significance, I think in terms of effect sizes, whether we can show a significant difference. So people need a lot of different things by whether training works. There's data that shows training works at that kind of macro level. But David, I think you make this point that what we're really trying to do is prevent the possibility or the low, minimize the probability that, a, that an event like a George Floyd could happen. Your point, you said it many times in this meeting tonight that, that uh, it could happen here. Not, so even if we accept that uh, the police department hasn't yet done anything like this and it's not yet in trouble, it could happen. So I think that's the point that the, the only way, if, if that's what you want to do is to, is to make it so it can't happen, then it leads you to this minimize the amount of contact argument. And I think that's what we're trying to sort of say. Um, it's, it's, the, it's the best way we can think of to, to you know, reduce these kind of interactions so that things don't go wrong. I mean, to me, that, that, that's what I, I take away from, from this. Um, whether or not, that you make, so you can have a great police chief, you could have the best policies on the books, you could have the most progressive, all, and it still doesn't mean that a single officer on a, on a single bad night could, you know, just, shoot some unarmed black person uh, and we could have a, a George Floyd, you know, in, in this town. And I think but, that, that there's something even, to that. But it's even broader than that. Uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be somebody gets shot. Um, I, I think it had, there has right. to be an acknowledgement that, that these, that, that, that for people of color primarily, but, but all marginalized people, um, interactions with armed police officers can in and of themselves be traumatic. Frankly, they're traumatic for me, but uh, you know, maybe just because I've seen too much in 40 years of doing this uh, uh, business. Um, uh, but, but I think we need to acknowledge that, that, that it, it's, it's not healthy um, uh, for there to be unnecessary contact between um, uh, uh, armed police officers and the citizenry. I 
to just to get focused, I think that that's what Namdi says here. I think um, uh, this is not real controversial, but I think it needs to be said. And uh, I I don't have it's it, it's somewhat wordy, but I I'm okay with it. I don't have any. I might, I might have to take another look at it, but given where we are in this process, I, I'm okay with this paragraph. Okay. I'm certainly okay with uh, with it as is, or however Nandy chooses to um, edit it in light of what we've discussed here. Yeah, I think we've talked about the sentiment, you know, the sentiment of reducing the footprint. Yeah. And, and the sentiment of, um, <clears throat> You know, saying this isn't the easiest thing to to do, um, but but I I think it's I think it's long, so um, but otherwise I'm fine to move on. <clears throat> I can see ways to shorten it, uh, you know, to bring it down a little bit. Um, so I'll work on, on on wordsmithing it, but it sounds like the same basic idea. Uh, there's agreement that we need that we need to be explicit about about our rationale. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, no disagreement on these issues until we get to active shooter. Yeah, I wanted to find a way to bring in my work on the school resource officer. I thought this is where I thought was the best place to do it was to say, you know, active shooting on campuses, you know, um, that that's what, and so basically to say, um, we acknowledge we need a plan and we especially need a plan because we've just agreed there will be no school resource officers and you know and I threw uh, Smith in as well as another campus in Northampton. Just to just to clarify we don't know that there is not a plan I assume there actually I assume there is yeah. a plan. Do, do you are you making any assumption here? Yeah I guess I, I don't know that I haven't heard one um, I, don't, I haven't seen one and I, I suppose you know um, uh, yeah, I, I, it, um, I don't recall. I, that may be a question I did not get to ask Chief Casper in our limited time. Right. Uh, that was on my list, but, but, but like kind of what the replacement plan is for the, the resource office. So I just think sort of saying, um, yeah, I just wanted to offer it as an example of, of the active shooter, like how an active shooter thing could happen in Northampton. And, and I thought this was an opportunity to, you know, I mean, look, okay. I was tempted to put in a lot of stuff by school resource officer and I didn't, I didn't, but I thought that this was a place to bring it up. I'm okay with it. I have no problem with it as written. Okay. Yeah, and keeping in mind, it's the superintendent's decision not to do it, and it's the police that have got to figure out a plan. That's if right. They don't, if they don't have presence there right. Right. to cover it, yeah. Um, just like there, ha I'm sure there's a plan for when they call in the state police. Yeah. I mean, it, I'm, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, I, I highlighted something here, certain automobile offenses. Well, in practice, uh, so many. I thought, uh, I just thought can and should was, uh, was almost, was too strong. I, I couldn't, I don't, I feel like this is unexplored territory and I, I was just feeling that's a little bit strong, um, that it's, it could possibly be handled by unarmed civilian community caretakers. Um, How about can likely be handled by- Yeah, okay, we got it, we're good. <laughs> I'm just changing it and we'll be good. All right. Uh, um, and here you have me again saying collaboration is is something that 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 needs to be considered, and that that uh, I I I'm wanting to emphasize the interrelationships between departments. Mm -hmm. It would be. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, but I'm just noting that domestic violence requires 
a police response. Uh, is it in this category? But yeah, it's under yes. D. I thought, I thought yes. we put it in the, I see. Yeah, I, I, and the reason why it's in this category is because of the-, the oh, Well, that's co-response, that's co co Cynthia. Co-response, yeah. So and that's I know, included. I, I just, in, in the spirit of Jane Doe, I just want to, you know, um, um, highlight the fact that it, it it can't be it has to be police presence. <laughs> and that's fine. And but yeah. I, I'm saying for all of these, yeah. one of these needs to be done, and co-response mm -hmm. is is there. Um, so and and then. Um, but not I, required. Not required. I guess. And, you know. I just. I'm sorry. I, I'm not following. Hang on, let's just it just seems to be in a bucket of these could be co-response, you know, um, and domestic violence rises to this other level because of the law. That, yeah. right. that the police so, so are you are you feeling this should be under pol pol armed police response? Is, so it, is I, I originally did, but I was convinced, you know, otherwise. But when we say armed, that's I guess that's what gets me all. <laughs> That's where the problem lies. But all I know is that if there is a domestic violence call, a police officer, armed or not armed, has to respond. Um, uh, so do, do you want to add that in, in under domestic violence? We could add something stating that so there's no ambiguity. Yeah, that's all I'm suggesting. Yeah, I, think, I think that's right. And I agree with, with Cynthia on that because it, it sounds like because the heading is and or community and or police, Someone might think we're saying that a community person could, might. Do right. This. Yeah. So I think adding something about the, the law requires, you know, or at least currently requires. So I mean, this is a little bit different. It says the subcommittee feels that the victim, as well as the circumstance, should dictate the preferred response. But Cynthia, you're kind of saying that's not actually the case. Yeah, unfortunately. I mean, unfortunately. So, I, so we, this is not accurate, and we really need to rework this so that it's accurate. Do you want to give it a shot, Cynthia? Um, sure. Uh, wait a minute. The police should get an armed police response. They have to get an armed. It's this armed is that, police. Is that it? Like, is that part of Chapter Two Hundred Nine A? I can't quote chapter and verse, but that's what I was told when I um, talked with the DA's office on this subject. So. Yeah, I've heard that. I. I don't know. Um, uh, I've, I mean, I've done a lot of domestic violence cases, but I, you know, obviously my involvement doesn't question. In my involvement, there always is a police response, so I've never stopped to think about whether it's even an option, but it's news to me. Yeah, you know, and maybe under the subcommittee feels, and maybe we can describe this in a more aspirational way that, you know, like, um, you know, like, again, the school resource, when we first started our work, the school, res every town was required to have a school resource officer, and then the law changed, you know, and there's a lot of reforms happening. So maybe we should, you know, just say that, that, you know, based on our testimony, we strongly, you know, we, we would advocate for or, you know, look for the opportunity to maximize the choice that the, that the, that the victim would have and, you know, Changes in law, flexibility that would allow that would be preferred, something like that. Um, while acknowledging that the law currently says, seems, seems our understanding is it currently says that the officer has to be involved, but we would, you know, advocate. I might, for yeah, I might get an, um, sorry, Namdi. Um, yeah, no, it's okay. Go ahead. I might get an answer to that tomorrow when I meet with Kelly, you know? Yeah, all right. You're right. Asking, asking about, yeah, yeah. About, about, yeah. So, so I'll, I'll rework it. Okay. Accordingly, Nick. All right, thank you. Uh, the next one, I just, uh, there was a, it, this is just an editing issue. We're talking about servicing of warrants and repeated failure to appear the course, could of course warrant ar arrest by armed police officers. I just, can we come up with another? Justify. <laughs> Justify, thank you. <laughs> oh, such good word people, okay. Um, Oh, I disagreed with you on this one, and I felt I I I suggested another wording.
if something happens to me medically, I don't care who comes. I want the first person available. Okay. Who's, who's trained, who's medically trained, yeah. Yeah, so I'm assuming they will only send medically trained people and that if the civilian responders are not medically trained, they won't be in the loop. But, but if they are, uh, then they, they can be the option. I, I know that, that dispatch, you might learn this tomorrow, they have an algorithm and they, they sometimes just call everybody. Um, and I, I, I know that for a fact, police, fire, and ambulance uh, uh, show up in many situations um, because they just want the first person there possible. Sure. So Nick, just to be clear, you want to see that last sentence about officers should, should respond to such calls. You want that cut? Should respond to such calls only when there are indications of a, of a have been a part of a, uh, a violent or potentially ongoing incident? Is it, Nick, are you, you're advocating for what's in red, but not in, not in black, right? Is, is that true? Correct. I don't. I'm. I'm replacing what's in black by what. But what? Why I put in red? Yeah. So, do you object to that last sentence? It sounds like you do. That. that so, if there's a violent or potentially ongoing incident, do, do you not think that our statement should sort of say that? Say if. So, so one just of the let me read it. Let me read it. Just a second. Yeah, read, read the last sentence. Only when they're in the. part. No, I don't. I don't agree with that sentence. Because um, th the uh, dispatch sends, sends the, whoever's closest because the police officers can respond to a medical emergency just as well as the other, um, the other departments. So, and, they, and, and, and they also sometimes send a fire department because they can attend, they can um, address a medical emergency. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I, this is probably not something worth quibbling about the last, at this last this late hour. So, so, but I, I, it's just that some medical emergencies happen in the middle of a crime or in the middle of something, and and, and that, I think that was what, why we were told the police are sometimes called in, um, in those situations. Um, so not just somebody having a heart attack at home, but you know, some kind of you know, public shooting or some other thing that that if there was some other complicating situation. So I think whoever wrote, I didn't write this, whoever wrote that sentence, I think was, was maybe David did, was thinking about the situation where there's a violent or potentially ongoing incident that would justify uh, police. Um, right. Yeah. I, I'm just saying, let's not, I don't want to mess with this process. This you is- want to emphasize just the medical emergency part. You want this to, you, you don't want to imagine anything else mixed in with the medical emergency. You, you want to focus on medical emergencies. That, is that, Nick, your, your, your point? Like, let's just I'm saying I'm saying medical police that police should be an option in medical emergencies right uh, even if the medical emergency has no violence yeah 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 whoever's first I see I see you're emphasizing whoever's first doesn't matter to you okay exactly I, yeah and I'm just sort of yeah so let's just move on because it is late and I think I think this is one that <laughs> you know fuss about too much okay. Oh, and then investigation of serious crime. I just thought you put this under the wrong category, David. I thought this, I thought you're saying this requires an armed police. Yeah, um, as I thought about this, um, it probably doesn't even merit a separate uh, letter. Um, I, it, it probably just should be under um, armed police response you know, it's just like it. it, it I, I guess I was just trying to distinguish that what we're really talking about here is is not a response to anything. It, it's sort of proactive investigation, mm -hmm. which there are at times is appropriate. And and the, the one that came to mind is one that I've been hearing about in, I think, a number of neighborhoods in in, in our area where you know people are stealing catalytic cur converters right out of your car uh, yeah it happened to my son yeah so so um uh you know obviously uh if people are doing that i don't have a problem and i don't think anybody has a problem with police being on the lookout for stuff like that um and doing proactive investigation um for specific incidents of reported uh, crime. And I guess I was trying to distinguish it from 
responding to a 911 call. Um, and, 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 and for that reason, I, I, I'm thinking that maybe it really doesn't merit its own separate category. Maybe it's more like a footnote to, you know, paragraphs 1A and B. I'm okay with putting it under the first section under armed yeah. police response. I would agree. I would agree with that. And um, it, for my own taste in, in, in these kinds of things, I, I like specific examples that refer to actual things that are happening in Northampton. I, I you know, I, coming from our commission, I, I, I think it, it moves it from the abstract yeah, I do too. in the minds of people who sort of have this idea that, oh, this is such a safe place. Oh, we don't need any, you've got specific real things that have happened. I think it's good to put those out there so people can kind of think about that um, as they're, yeah, so I, so I agree, We're just moving it to a different section. I'll, I'll move it up. I'll move it up. Uh, mental health related calls. Um, yeah, explain the, why you want to call it behavioral health calls. Um, okay. Because, um, they're actually responding to behavior and not a psychiatric condition that maybe it's a mental health condition, maybe it's medical, maybe it's substance abuse. Yeah, so can, you, can we say mental and or, and or behavioral health? Would that, would that satisfy, satisfy you? Because I, I do think that, I think that the phrase- People won't health, understand, I'm okay with that because people don't understand that behavioral health includes mental health. Yeah, so but, if you would just say that, I think people know what mental health is. And I think if you say- me, mental and or behavioral, I think people will at least be with you, you know? Good suggestion. Agreed. Good. No concerns for me on any of this page. I, I highlighted this because I wrote something that actually is a strong statement that I wanna make sure you all agree with. And that is, I said, it is urgent that the NPD in the city of Northampton create the availability of behavioral health experts to respond to overt behavioral health calls. Um, overt. Uh, they often, often police are called and they're told somebody's acting strange. They, they, they don't know what the issue is. Uh, overt means uh, I, uh, I, I have a son with schizophrenia and um, right now he's out of control and doing such and such. Yeah. Um, that's what I meant by that. Um, if it could be stated more clearly, you guys are very good at that. <laughs> yeah. I have no problem with it. Yeah. No okay. concern with the word overt. It's a, it's a little jargony. It's a little inside baseball for you know for mental health professionals. But I think uh, all right, okay, okay. No, no, no but, but but just but just a little. I mean, and and, I, really? and you know, I'm I'm. Uh, I'm uh, and, uh, so. Explicit, uh, apparent. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe explicit. If yeah, that's fine, yeah, explicit, explicit, um, or um, apparent behavioral health. Uh, uh, well, you, you're talking about the, the hardcore ones, aren't you? How about you? just behavioral health calls? Well, that, that, I think that would be fine. That, I think you don't need the overt, really. And so, okay, yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we don't have to get into the nuance. Okay, and then uh, you're okay with urgent. I, it just, you know, you just may, um, we just might have to recognize that that's a recommendation, right? Correct, it, that's exactly right. That's why I... And it's kind of buried in something else. And so when we try to, I mean, we're, about, we're, probably, we're probably not going to have a report that says our subcommittee or this. How sub about important? How about important? It, it, I mean, it's fine to say, Urgent. I'm just making that distinction. Okay, I'm going to just leave it at Okay, good.
Yeah, so this, this, this blues, this was for my own interest, and maybe this is something that, uh, I don't know whether David is the one who knows about these, the, dis, the I'm sorry, the um, detail work. Um, I started wondering about the issue of if police are replaced with civilians doing detail work, could the city still get the money? I, I, that's just a question, you know, like, so, you know, if, if the city, if there's city employees working and doing detailed work, could whatever arrangement the police have that gives a, a certain percentage back to the city, is that possible? And then I wonder, and this is more for your expertise, David, I'm curious about your, your thought about this. Would it matter to you if police officers did detailed work, but did so out of their uniform and without their gun? I, I ask that because I suspect if this is a lucrative part of police, if this is a perk, and, and, our, and we're recommending taking it away from police, I guess I, I would wanna do so carefully and thoughtfully. You know, if, if someone's looking at this as, as a way of making extra money, could they satisfy our concerns by being out of uniform and not wearing their weapons doing detailed work? Um, so I wonder, David, just for you particularly, do you have any reaction to either of those, those two things I'm saying? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's kind of all one package. You get the police, you get the badge, you get the gun. I, I, I don't think... Uh, and there, there may even be, um, well, I, I, I don't know. There's language in that, you know, police officers are on duty at all times or mm -hmm. whatever. I, 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 the short answer is really uh, not something that I have a, a quick answer yeah. for. Now. Sure, sure. I, I was just imagining, like, I was imagining who, the, like, these civilian detail people. I imagine they probably be wearing some kind of non-police uniform. If yeah. They're out yeah. And so I was thinking, oh, what if a police officer wanted to do that? You know, because um, I think our real objection is we don't want to see an armed person doing this. It's, it's really that armed person. And of course, yeah. wearing the uniform, people will assume they're armed if they're wearing the uniform. So yeah. anyway, I was just thinking about that, because especially if this is actually money on food on the table kind of issue. Right. Like we're if this yeah. really is a lucrative thing. I mean, think about the perks in your job. Right. We all have things that we can do for extra money. And yeah. if somebody came along and said, no, you can't do your profession can't do this anymore. You know, I, I, I just wanted to take a minute and think about the implications of that. Um, no, I, I I totally agree. I uh, uh, I'm 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 very concerned about that. I I do not agree with the people who feel police officers are overpaid. Um, the the police officers who make um, a lot of money when it gets published in the paper, it's usually because they're working a zillion overtime, extra detail jobs. Because you, yeah. you know, like people in all professions, there are some people that are you know, financially insecure or just, you know, people who are just eager to improve their lot in life more than others. And, and I don't want to deprive uh, um, anyone of that. Um, so, uh, I, I mean, I, uh, I, I, I was when we started out on this process of the mindset that those should be civilian jobs. But, um, you know, I, 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 I've sort of come around to thinking that, well, let's leave the police in those jobs, but let's take the money and put it towards establishing uh, police right. alternatives. Got it. Okay. Got it. Cynthia? Okay. Yeah. I don't think anyone else has an opinion on this, but I, I just thought... I have one, but Cynthia, anything you want to say? Well, just to respond to your question, Namdi, I think the going rate is, um, I think it's $50 an hour. And the city sets that rate. So then a piece goes to the city and a piece goes to the person who's doing the work and then a piece goes maybe to the police department. So the city can set any rate it wants and it has many unfulfilled requests. Um, but I think we can't be wishy-washy on this one. We're either recommending it or we're not recommending it. <laughs> you know, And it is an opportunity and I know it's not gonna go down well at all because there's, uh, when we look at this, the amount of money being made by certain officers, it's significant. It really yeah, I, 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 for that reason, I'm really reluctant to say these need to be civilian jobs because uh, yeah. it, it be, it'll be hugely unpopular with the rank and file of the, of the department. I think I, alternatives or spending in contracts is going in that direction. I don't know for sure. So this is another one of those things where we can suggest one thing, but another subcommittee is suggesting something yeah. else. Yeah, I'd like to I'd like to join David in in sort of being opposed to to locking police out of this. I'd like to think creatively, like could they do it without their weapon? Could they do it without the uniform or whatever? You know, like, rather I, than saying. I, I need to just say one thing. Yeah, but I don't I I don't think we can say and without a weapon. I don't think we can we can say that. I don't think we can tell police 
that they they can't carry a weapon. If they're out of uniform, then they're they're like that changes everything. Um, but they might have a concealed weapon. They might have the, they might have their weapon in their car. I I I don't know what police do with their weapons when uh, when it's not on their waist uh, or, or when they're not in uniform. Uh, I, but I I feel the disarming of police is going to be not received very well. Yeah. Well, the other thing we can think about is with the new safety center, or whatever, there could be a there could be two contracts in the city. You know, you need a cop for this work, or you need somebody else at a cheaper rate for this type of work. You know, make it competitive. I, I just think something like some kind of out that says, you know, they could they could do it in their civilian role or some I don't know. Like I, I just don't want to cut off the opportunity for people to make money if this if this really is a lucrative thing for them. I, I, well, I just say another alter alternative would be MPD officer to work out of uniform. Uh, they'll be wearing a different uniform, you know, but they'll uh, but I don't feel comfortable with and without a weapon. Yeah, I, no, I, sure. Right. I don't feel like it's that. not for I, us to say that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm, the spirit of this is that they shouldn't appear to be armed officers doing these roles. And I, I could support that, but I just don't want to block someone who's a police officer. For, I've said it a few times. So, so and, and, and if it means our subcommittee voting against or, or not recommending this, I would go with, I'd rather go with that than to support um, cutting off an option um, for extra money in this way. That's my so view. Are, are, are we leaving this in here? So Cynthia said she's going to be wishy-washy. Uh, um, let's see. How yeah. about just how about just the we wonder? Just that one sentence. It's just a question. Yeah, maybe it's a question. Sure. I mean, yeah. And maybe we could bring it up with the full commission to see if we can persuade some people to 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 when we make when the full commission makes the recommendation to make it in a softer way. Um, because I'm not sure people are thinking about this this element. So yeah. Yeah. okay, David, with that. Yes. Okay. Uh, please there, list, yeah, this will this will get filled in later, Department of. Um, uh, this was a about a civil about a uh, public comment about liability, uh -huh. uh, which we just went over. Body camera, I liked what you wrote. Uh, police complaints of officer abuse or misconduct. I I need to take my section and combine it with this section. I I have not done that. I so I, I need to review all of this. But let's just see what what Namdi said. Yes, this is repetitive what I said, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, welcome to inter integrate it. The one thing I think that I, that I added that's not maybe in yours, Nick, is, is this thing, I, this refrain I keep making about how the existing thing has only three categories and it would be good to have another category, a way to kind of think about non-law breaking, non-policy breaking violations that have still upset the community. So I, I'd like to have something about like that, that feature um, being highlighted and a need to kind of be more responsive to what, Chief Casper, and, and I, I would be fine with you guys uh, deleting my, my statement when I call, when I say she was somewhat dismissive. If you think that's too, 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 too nasty or something, I'm, you can cut that. Um, but I, but I, I, I did find it a little off-putting the way she described it as customer service complaints. Are, we, are you on number four? Yeah, is that so number four? Yes. I think Chief Casper just described such complaints uh, as a customer service complaint. So you can cut the somewhat dismissively. That was a parenthetical comment I think is not necessary. And maybe you know it could be shortened as well. Um, In fact, even the whole thing about the customer service complaint could come out. I think the whole sentence probably. Um, but something that really says that, you know, I'm really trying to get at this. I, I you know, like even like I'm thinking of something that Dan described, you know, like being out at a public forum and watching a police officer, you know, put his hand on his gun while he looks at, you know, these things, these sort of subtle things that, that sit with people. You know, Javier talking about being pulled over repeatedly, um, you know, this, you know, the sense of, being hassled and, and and technically they're following the law technically they're doing the right thing and yet there's a feeling that there's something wrong and somehow how do we get that 
um, out there. And that, that's what I'm trying to get at in the language here. How can people register complaints that don't seem, rather than being told that they're just not substantiated? I, I have no complaints with anything you added. Uh, okay. Yeah. It, it pretty much is, repeats what I said below. So I think I got down to dispatch and then I went, I didn't have much time and I just started adding my own. I didn't even see this was addressed. So, um, uh, I, I, I need to take a look at this section here. Just, I, I, I haven't reviewed it. Yeah. And so this comes, this is one of the examples of the rep repetition. And I guess if we agree that we're not going to cite the public complaints about the committee, uh, this probably also should come out um, just to be consistent. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Okay, I'm good with that. Okay. Oh, wait a second. This up. I don't need to say this. Yeah, I probably can cut that out too. Yeah, that's a. Yeah, I don't know what where I was coming <laughs> from. I was I was really rushing it at the end. Yeah, no, it's it's okay. Yep. Yeah, I thought some of this was meant to be kind of a summary of the whole thing, and so that's I saw there was some repetition here, but um, but there are some things that are kind of new, like the policy manual and, and the and the um. Yeah, we'll just go through this again. I, I just, I, I put this section in, uh, uh, giving a sample uh, from the manual to, uh, to, just to show that the manual really does try to do the right thing. And that, that it's just worth noting that at least th that, that effort is there. It may not, it may not, you may not feel that it it needs to be in our report. Uh, I just um, thought it was worth noting that it, it, some things are very well written. Yeah, so I guess, Nick, what I would say as a fellow mental health uh, practitioner, um, yes, I look at this paragraph and, and see what you see that uh, it's well done. It, show, it shows a certain sympathy, uh, empathy for this population. I, I'm not sure that everybody would see that if the same way. And it might just be better and shorter for you to say just that certain sections show, were, you know, were, were sh show compassion for the mentally ill. I, I would rather say it descriptively. I, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I can, I can also say, say what you think could be improved because I, I do think the value of bringing this up at all goes back to the point I've been trying to make that, you know, there will be a Northampton Police Department for the, at least the short term. And we should point out anything that we see that could be improved that based on our review um, and, if, and the policy manual, I'm sure no one, nobody else, no, no other subcommittee well, is gonna bring it up. So if you have something to say about the policy manual. Um, well, actually I do say it up above. Yeah, I say, yeah. uh, but it, it, there are clear efforts to ma manual to address these various things. So I've said it, so that's good. That's, yeah, I mean, that's I think, enough. I think that, what that quote was trying to say, Nick, just one little thing, if you say like sh shows empathy and compassion, you know, for, you know, for a vulnerable population. I think that's what that quote was meant to show that they, that there's a kind of humanity in that quote, but I think you can just say that in a few words, like they're, that, they're, that the, la the language, I think that's what you're impressed by, like that, yeah, that, they, yeah. that, they, that they're kind of being compassionate and, um, or at least or, uh, well, coming back to, to David's point, what you say in print may not be your practices, right? So like what, so, may, and, and maybe that, maybe that's, maybe that's the critique that, you know, um, how these get translated into practice was not clear. It didn't convince David, and maybe that maybe that um, that could be a recommendation, like to, to, make, to convince us that these things that you aspire to actually happen. Because actually, so the public testimony suggests that it doesn't for for everybody. So you can say you're as compassionate as you want to be with the mentally ill. Right. If we get the negative feedback we got, uh, something is not right. fully working. That's that is correct. <laughs> um, training, I. Did we address training anywhere above? I don't, I don't think so. Words.
Yeah, it might be worthwhile, uh, Nick, where CIT first appears, if you could spell out fully what that stands for, because I think, I, I know, again, you you in particular and I, uh, know what that means, and a lot of mental health people would know, but not everybody yeah. does. Um, yeah, I'll, that's very good. That's good. I, I'll fix that. And the, the last sentence, <clears throat> while supporting training, the subcommittee does not view training as a significant solution. Uh, um, can we say? Um, we don't, yeah, I see the problem with that. Uh, well, it's more about, it's not the solitary solution. You know, it's not the only one and done solution. So that's what I'm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, maybe not not a complete solution, uh, or or uh, it's a or in, in, in inadequate to the size of the problem, or something along those lines. But yeah, complete, complete, good, complete. Yeah. Okay, and then oh, this we can right. remove the yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll review yeah. this to see if there's anything <laughs> that might might be worth yeah. putting up above. Yes, but. yes, and it might be Nick. I, I don't, if I'm following your logic here. Um, maybe popping in the policy manual on, under this section. It sounds like you've got a list of. Like, yeah, I will do that. Uh, yeah, in here somewhere. Yeah, Areas well, it, it, we were, I was, yes, I'll put it, I, I'll move it down. I'll get it, I'll reorganize it. Yeah, got go it. Ahead. And, then and then this is the last one. And I, I would say uh, strategic planning and mission statement. And mission statement. Yep. And I'm going to um, actually, while I'm talking to you, I'm going to pull up that guy's statement just a second. It was Ed Olmstead. Oh, yeah. I and, saw that. And Ed, Ed said the current statement is while striving toward professional excellence, we are dedicated to work in partnership with our community to prevent all, to prevent and suppress crime to reduce the fear of crime and to enhance the quality of life through respect and understanding for all. And he says, I offer the following addition. Led by our courage to face the remaining disturbing racial and other inequitable policing patterns nationally, we are dedicated to continuing to transform our department to achieve equal safe access, protection, services, and accountability for all persons whom we encounter. Now, I could throw that in or something similar, or I could, um, uh, we could say, we want the police to review it with these, with these things in mind. I like offering it as an example, Nick, uh, 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 and, and I, you know, I, I quite like those words and, and particularly I like that you know, it, um, it it certainly connects to the George Floyd. It seems to have implicit in it that the, that the Northampton Police already aspires to kind of be socially just, but ha it has this kind of aspirational. Piece. It looks forward to improving. So to me, like I, th I, I like, but but I wouldn't want to dictate they must adopt this language. But I like giving okay. it as a clear example of something they might consider, something like this, uh, offered offered by public testimony or something like offered by the community a community member. Yeah, I think that's exact. That's a great idea. Yep, that's a good idea. Um, I've. I need. I think we're done. <laughs> Look at that. Only I, um, can, I've can lost I ask, everybody. Do Do we have to meet next week? Which is fine. It's just that I have my monthly meeting with another board. At six forty-five, if we have to meet, can we meet earlier? Yeah, we. I. I. I, I think we need. I don't know where we're at. I don't. I don't really understand the exact process at this point. Yeah, it might Do be worth holding the time, right? And, and 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 that should be our last meeting, probably. Yes. Right? Yes. So if we meet again, it'll be our last meeting. And but but Cynthia, you would need to meet earlier, if we did. That's right. Thank but, you. Uh, it was at five thirty that. Was was what worked for you before? What was the time you asked for last time? Um, my meeting, my other meeting is at six forty-five. So depending on how long we think we need to meet, is it four thirty or five o'clock? Either yeah. is fine with me. Yeah. So I, I'm um, busy until about four thirty that day, but I can meet anytime after that. David. Yeah, I think uh, I don't have my calendar written in front of me, but I think it should be fine. That's Monday. 
The 15th. The, the 15th. 15th. 4.45? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm wondering if we're going to need to meet. Um, you may not need to, but I don't know what's coming down the pike. I'm free. Uh, I'm free, so i right, so available. So 4.45 is, is the agreed time? 4.45. And, uh, you know, we can be brave and, and cancel the meeting and if we need to. Yep. Is that legitimate with public meeting? Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Can't, can't, so that maybe we can't cancel the meeting. Um, I think it has to be canceled within a period of time. I don't, I mean, know, the, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Maybe Noah would know it if she's not. I, uh, you know, asleep. What, what we should plan to meet. I don't, I don't, it, I think it'll be post public comment at that point. Um, and we should, we can meet to like seal the deal. I don't know. Yeah, I think that would be good, or, but also if we don't have to. Let's, I'll let's, check with uh, I'll check with Dan. No, okay, we'll find out. We'll find out. Yeah, and it's, there's always David took it off for champagne. So. Okay, so Cynthia and Mandy, send me your revisions. I'll rework it tomorrow, and I'll and then I submit it to you and Dan and Noah. Um, Noah to um, well, Noah to this committee and to Dan. Okay. All right. Okay. And um, I get it. Yes. Uh, and um, and I think we're done for the night. I don't know. Uh, poor Noah is still with us. I don't know. Uh, I'm here, I'm here. Oh no! I feel so bad for you. I really. Uh, <laughs> but, but thank you. You are a, a wonderful soul to put up with this. Thank you. Uh, I'll be coming to y'all for career advice. So, <laughs> what was that? I said I'll be coming to y'all for career advice. Oh yeah, gladly, gladly. You you've earned it. You have earned it. <laughs> Thank uh, you. And, and <laughs> yes. we'll set up a meeting. I'll get you, and I'll even look at resumes and statements and, and things. Like that. And, and oh, Robert, ha you. thank you for hanging in with us. I have to say, anybody who could sit through this meeting I know, I'm so is, is is remarkable. <laughs> um, whether you were sitting through the entire thing or not. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, here. Um, we need to do a roll and then we can say good night. And thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And we, uh, I forget, <laughs> do we motion first? Oh, yeah, we have to have a motion. Okay. Move to adjourn. Second. Okay. Okay, let me write that down. Hold up, wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> uh, Nick. Yes. David. Bye all, yes. <laughs> Mandy. Uh, yes. Cynthia. Yes. Amen. Uh, Good night. Amen. Good night. <laughs> Good night.